Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of Yet Another Movie Podcast, the podcast where we talk about anything and everything related to movies or whatever else we want to talk about. I'm Shane Wallach and I'm with... Sean Higgins. And today we have a special episode. This is one of our favorite things to do. This is an episode I've been waiting for quite a long time to do because... <laughs> Well, wow. yes, it, F, it you probably read the title. It is our top, well, 25 or bottom 25, yes. depending on which way you want to look at it. Worst movies of 2017. So finally, after 12 months of pain and misery, we get our catharsis. We get to whine and moan about the movies that we saw that yes. just pissed us off. We get to punch back at those movies that wasted about two hours each of our lives per film. <laughs> uh, too much. Too long. Way too long. Yeah, I, I, you do the math, and like if you ever do this depressing math where you oh add up all God. the movies that are two stars or lower and figure out how many hours in a year you've wasted on terrible movies, and yep. then you start thinking about how much you paid for those movies, and you're like, oh, God, what have I done? Exactly. But that is the point of, of being a moviegoer like us. You know, we see a lot of movies, and not all of them are going to be good. And they can't all be winners, unfortunately. Of course, we don't go to the movie theater to try to have a bad time. We do see movies where we think we're going to hate. But we always try and give them a chance. We don't walk into movies ready to hate them, you yeah. know. We walk into movies with an open mind. I can tell you some of movies that are higher up on my list, I expected to not like, actually. You know, or at least think we're just okay. They actually, I had some surprises this year. And I told people about that in my best list. Some of these movies surprised me. And some of these movies that we <laughs> thought we were going to be good also surprised me in a different way. Oh, uh, yeah. There are some disappointing ones on my list for So, yes, sure. there's some, some disappointments on both of our lists. Mm. And there's also movies that we went in thinking we were going to hate. And guess what? <laughs> we did. Okay, so here's the format. So, we're it's going to be a little bit different than our best list. In the fact, that it will be a little bit shorter. We're just going to kind of rant, you know, about every movie for not too long. We're going to try and keep this mo- video not too uh long because i mean how how long can you listen to someone complain yeah. we're just going to kind of try and release get stuff off of our systems out of our system so we're going to start with just listing some honorable mentions uh you mind if i go first sean go ahead all right so uh let's see how many do i want to list it's kind of just like what movie was painful enough to mention let's just start at the top of the two stars so this would be really quick starting out we've got kingsman the golden circle what a disappointment i mean really even julianne moore couldn't save this movie um, next up, Atomic Blonde from the oh people or person, one of them who did John Wick. Um, yeah, I think it's the writer. I thought it was one of the directors. It was uh, I know. I'm... David Leach. Yeah. Okay, um, then I was Deadpool two guy. Okay, then I was right. It's the um, director. Okay. Yeah, he was the co-director <laughs> of the first one. Yeah, I'm already talking about way too much about this movie. It had a really cool uh, like ten minute oneer. Yeah, that's that just watch the that. The movie. <laughs> that's why it's as high as it is. Just watch that and ignore the rest of the movie, and you'll mm-hmm. be great. The movie was not good. Um, then we have Alien Covenant. Uh, I I can't say I didn't expect this. Uh, it wasn't horrible, so it's not on my list. But it's still a betrayal of everything you love about Alien. So Ridley Scott continues to screw up what we loved as a child. You know. As he does, I'm sure you're going to talk about this. So yeah, I'm being uh, very quiet for reasons. Um, very good reason. Next up, I got Split. So this is probably one of the ones. This one I disagree with. I'm on the most. This was in my honorable mentions, obviously. Yeah. So this is probably I'm I'm the most um, different on for most people. So I will mm-hmm. talk about this one just for a sec to explain it to people. Yeah, I'm not an M Night Shyamalan fan. I think he's just kind of a hack at this point. And this movie, it was everyone was calling it his return to form, along with uh, the visit that he did a couple years ago. I liked the visit actually. I thought it was a pretty decent movie because I actually fell for the twist. This movie, the twist is just stupid, and I can't take uh, James McAvoy seriously in this movie. I thought this whole movie was just kind of awkwardly, uh, unintentionally comedic, and. Uh, I don't know. Just this movie didn't work for me. It wasn't scary. It wasn't suspenseful. It was just kind of annoying. And it it's so predictable. That was my biggest problem with it. It goes exactly where you think it's going to go from the beginning until the twist, which <laughs> isn't... I, it's calling it a twist is not fair. It's just like a shoe-in jam. Yeah, it's an Easter egg that turns into basically selling the sequel, really. Yeah, selling the new movie. And, I mean, that probably gives it away. You probably heard, but by now. But I won't spoil it. Um, but, yeah. Not I, that's where I stand on it. Anyway, keep going really quick. Jigsaw. It's basically exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's 
a middling Saw film. That's exactly what I expected it to be. It's one of the bland, boring middle ones. I really wanted them to do something in the movie, and I really, I, it wouldn't be on this list <laughs> if they did it. And you know what I'm talking yes, about, Sean. Yes, I do. If they would have done some cockamamie, crazy way uh, to they... resurrect Jigsaw, then yes. I would have done it. No, without saying any spoilers, they didn't do what I wanted. Um, yeah, this movie was a disappointment, but I mean, how much, how kind of much I can I expect from a Saw movie at this point? I mean, geez. Uh, then we have The Shack. I, I just remember laughing in the theater at this movie, like just of how silly I thought everything was. Yeah. Um, every line is like this inspirational thing. Like this movie is just trying so hard to inspire you, and I hate st- stuff like that. Power Rangers. Um, I was joking with Sean off camera that this, or off microphone, I guess in this case, that this was the longest commercial for Krispy Kreme <laughs> I've ever seen. Um, no, but in more seriousness, just bland, boring action movie. Nothing interesting about it. It's basically a remake of Chronicle without the characters that are interesting. I could see that. I guess I fell for it enough. I I enjoyed it enough as a nostalgia piece. I suppose. well, I will say I like the show. I like I watched Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as a kid. I watched several of the sequel series as a kid. This just didn't hit the nostalgia for me. I thought they should have done a lot more silly movie. That actually would they have should have done that more. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I think they were trying to be a little too serious. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah. Uh, Before I Fall, uh, Groundhog Day teen drama. <laughs> That's what it is. Jeez. I and mean, what is there to say about this? I'm it's being quiet for obvious reasons. Boring, bland, stupid. That's all I can really say. And then last but not least, Pirates of the Caribbean 5. There are probably, I'd say, four too many of these movies. They should have stopped. when they, Quit when they're ahead. That's what they should have done. Now they're just... just fallen deeper and deeper into the pit of despair and darkness i i don't know why they keep making these movies and luckily they're not making as much money anymore so hopefully we're done now and that's it that's my honorable mention so so what do you have or i should say dishonorable mentions yes my dishonorable mentions uh i'm gonna say four of them i have uh five on here and i'm gonna start off with alien covenant i agree with you god was that disappointing i rewatched all the alien movies except for resurrection of course um and you know, I was, like, hopeful, at least. I'm like, okay, I didn't love Prometheus, but really Scott's back. It does look more like Alien. It's, like, the first two-thirds I was kind of going with it. They had stupid characters like Prometheus, but I was still like, okay, I'm willing to give this movie a chance. And at least they weren't scientists. Third, yeah, that's why I was giving it more of a chance. They weren't scientists. <laughs> it was more like the first Alien. They're just guys, basically, that are on their mission to go and, I guess, search for life. Or, no, they're supposed to go they're to a colonizing. planet and colonize. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then they hear a John Denver song, so they change their plan. Well, fair enough. but That's the plot of the <laughs> that's movie. That's good logic. I get it. Um, that's a joke, obviously. Uh, but then the last third of the movie, when it literally becomes Friday the 13th with a xenomorph, I was like, screw you, really, mm. Scott. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next one, Jigsaw. I agree with you. It is a middling Saw sequel. Everything you said. It's just, what a boring, lame comeback where they do nothing new or interesting at all. Apparently he has, like, infinite helpers. We're gonna find out after Saw 100, he has, like, the entire country. I know, apparently. This is, like, the purge, but with Jigsaw. It's like... Who screwed in the light bulbs in the bathroom and Saw? Well, that will be Saw (laughs) 9 will answer that question. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> That's really the logic we're dealing with at this point with this series. And it's, I don't care anymore. Uh, the Shack, I agree. It is what Wonder could have been if it was wrong in the sense of really trying to hug it, tug at your heartstrings, really trying to force a message into you. And I agree. And even as someone who is, you know, religious and a Christian, it's like, yeah, I still was, I didn't care at all what the message was. I was bored. I will say there were parts of it that I was like, okay, this isn't the worst thing ever. I can see why some people like it. It's just not for me. But then there were parts where I was just rolling my eyes and laughing in the theater. Like, what the hell is this? (laughs) Um, So, yeah, not that good of a movie. It's also extremely morbid. (laughs) Well, it's a morbid thing to talk about. But they never, like, answer it effectively. They, They basically spend an hour and a half wasting Sam Worthington's time by not answering his question. Yeah. Fair enough. They shoo, They just go around. They the never questions. answer the question. I know they never do. They, it's a great question. If they would have answered it, I would like yeah. the movie more. Uh, but my next one is Leverface. Uh, 
I forgot about definitely that. Definitely not the worst by any means, but I was just so bored. And when they just take the character of Leatherface from the original classic, one of my favorite horror films, and how they explain him, I'm just like, ah, I'm going to pretend this movie doesn't exist because you're retconning stuff that I don't like the way you retconned it. And that's really all this movie is. It's just try to explain Leatherface. And I'm like, okay. By the way, I figured out exactly who could they try to make it a mystery, like who's gonna be Leatherface in this group of people, and I figured it out like really quick. Because they're they're the movie. they're red herring and this yeah, other guy. Yeah, it's so painfully obvious what they're doing. It's like, okay, someone's gonna it's have to the do attractive this guy. guy. Of course it's the attractive guy. Yeah. Of course it's the one that talks the most. Duh. Yeah, but which anyway, is a hard retcon. It was a very hard retcon, and that annoys me. So when I see the original next, I'm just gonna pretend this movie doesn't exist. Um just like Texas Trains on 3D. Anyway. Yeah, it, um, it just barely missed my honor, dishonorable mention. That's fair. Uh, and then the next, last one is the Boko experiment. I liked it more than you did from what I remember. But at the same time, it was dumb, boring, dumb characters. And all you're waiting for them is to all die. And that's it. You don't have anyone to root for. There's one person that kind of acts intelligent for a while, but then... They died too. Quick <laughs> that was in the so movie. funny. In the you remember, elevator. You remember what I'm talking about? The yeah, elevator. The elevator. We, yeah. It wastes 20 minutes of screen time. <laughs> it's like I like this character, and then oh, now I don't care anymore. Even that one little thing I had, and it's just like crappy. Kevin <sighs> Woods, I guess it's crappy. You know, just it's from the director Wolf Creek, which I know is a cult favorite for a lot of people. I thought it was okay, but yeah, I'm not really into it. All right, that's my honorable mentions. You want to start with your 25? Yes. Okay, starting off, and again, we're going to try and get through these. Yeah. Um, I have, let me make sure I did my math right. Uh, Yeah, I did 25. Oh, crap, I didn't do my math right. Oh, geez. (laughs) I guess I have a few more honorable mentions. I'll just go. I'll just go through them real quick. I did, I just changed stuff around so it like it moves some things. Um, sorry. Uh, I'll just rant. Go through them real quick. Car, okay. Cars three. It was. I don't remember the movie at all. I mean, I think that's kind of like one of the the qualifications for being a dishonorable mention. If you literally like forgot everything about it, except that it's like Rocky Balboa, but with cars. Which is as interesting as it sounds. Uh, then I have the Dark Tower. Uh, this could have been good. Idris Elba, I like him, and yeah, I give it a small pass, but yeah, I don't think I'd watch so it again. So bland, so boring. It's like they're trying to do these young adult series with everything now, and it's just like, yeah, it didn't work. I mean, I'm, I haven't read the, I haven't read sense. the source material, but I heard, I've heard it's way better by everyone. And I can believe that. And last up uh, is the Snowman. Uh, this just missed my <laughs> list. It's really stupid. It's it's really predictable. It's not as bad as other people are saying though, because it's a well shot film. It's terribly edited, but it's well shot, mm-hmm. and it's the director. You know, he, Thomas Alfredson, I believe his name is. Yes, I was right. Or Thomas, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, he did Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which is a movie I like. You know, he's a talented guy, and they tried, but the movie is incoherent, nonsensical crap and then there's this stupid tablet thing i made jokes about that it's like this oversized like briefcase thing with a fingerprint scan it's like this silliest like they're trying to make this thing and this movie like that that's cool and it's stupid and yeah a good cast it's just a waste you know that's what it was it was just a waste michael fassbender rebecca ferguson yeah fair enough uh okay now my actual 25 sorry uh that was my bad i just moved stuff around recently so Okay, my actual 25 is Monster Trucks. <laughs> this movie, is, yeah, this is like the weirdest movie of the year, like in terms of who thought of this? Like, <laughs> let's make a movie about Monster Trucks and actually have monsters in the trucks. I can just sense. imagine that pitch me. Hey guys, what if we took those Monster Truck toys that kids play with, we actually put monsters in them? Yeah, so... <laughs> so it's the freaking main monster is named Creech, which is the most annoying name Are I think of ever. Serious? Creech, oh my God. yes. And they try to do this like you know inspiring, cool story against the man, the evil corporation, oh, of course. the oil company that's oh, trying to kill it? them. Oh my god, it feels like a '90s kids movie. It Shit, is. This came out two decades this too late. This is a '90s kids like family film that came out too late, and it's shot like that. It's like bland, boring cinematography. Really, yeah, it feels really like like okay. that. You know, it feels like a '90s film. 
a bad one, you know? One of the bad ones, of course. Yeah, yes. like one of those Disney, you know, like crap. Like Willy kind yeah, of bad. Yeah, like just, yeah. just bland, dumb movie. And oil is bad. Anyone who works with oil is evil, even though we need oil. fisted environmental message, Sometimes. yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just a forgettable movie. It checks every single box, too, mm-hmm. which drove me crazy. Anyway, that's all the movie deserves. I'm all sorry. right, fair enough. My number 25 is The Mummy, because, wow, oh, Universal. Guess, guess what my 24 is. Oh, you want to Let's share? talk about it together, I guess. All right. Uh, Universal could have done something with this Dark Universe idea, because, to be fair, they Dark started. Universe! Okay, yes, you're right. I shouldn't go any further before I acknowledge this. Dark Universe, that's the stupidest name for this universe. That's just I just love that opening logo. Mentally challenged. Dark And the logo universe. is awful, yes. Pretentiousness! Now, to a new world of gods and monsters. Now, to go back to what I was saying, at the very least, they did this in the 30s and the 40s with the original Universal Monsters. So I kind of see where the thought process is there, besides money, of course, because that's the main thought process, of course. But by God, what a waste of opportunity. Why don't you get a writer with a good script, a good director, and sure, Tom Cruise, fine. Tom Cruise, I get it. He sells, and I like Tom Cruise as an actor, so I get it. (laughs) But get him to act... (laughs) <laughs> um, do something interesting. Don't just remake the Brendan Fraser, the mummy, and do it worse. I mean, by God. <laughs> um, not like that's a masterpiece, but it's a fine quality film. It's certainly better than this. This movie is just so bland and boring. And yeah, I can understand. Like, Dark Universe just crumbles before it even begins. And I mean, we I talked why. about this movie at length. We did. So. so I guess, yeah, you can listen to our podcast. I do remember walking out, like, trying to be like, oh, it wasn't so bad. And it was one of those slowly dawning. No, it really was just not well, good. Well, I, I agree with what I said back then. I think the movie's really stupid. <laughs> you know, Tom Cruise does just paycheck movie. He's not trying. You know, he's Yeah, just there. he's definitely not. Um,. The movie, it, the plot is just so stupid. You know, basically nothing happens in the movie, too. Like, I couldn't, like, summarize the plot for you because it doesn't, nothing really happens in the movie. It, it reminds me of Thor the Dark World. It's just a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I could see that. That doesn't really, you can't even summarize the plot. It's just this nonsensical CGI mm-hmm. heavy. In exactly. fact, the ending does remind me of Thor the Dark World, the climax. It almost is the same climax. No, I, I can definitely see that now that you mention it. Yeah, so. <laughs> I mean, they got Alex Kurtzman, Mr. Boring, bland guy, yeah. to do it. I mean, this could have. This probably is the final nail already in the coffin for Dark Universe. They already pulled all the other movies. They so, did. Recently, um, I read those articles. It was just like, yeah, I'm not surprised. I don't blame him. I think this is a stupid idea. They should start with Square One. It's funny, Guillermo del Toro is like, I wish I did this so it wouldn't suck. Um, you technically remade Creature from the Black Lagoon this year, sir, so I'd actually be completely okay with that. <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, I agree with everything you said. Stupid, boring movie. Yeah. All right, so that's my number 24. So, so what's yours? I guess I'll go my number 24. is yep. All Eyes on Me, the Tupac biopic. Uh, yeah, I liked the Straight Outta Compton movie. I really did, back in 2015. Um, and, you know, I liked some of Tupac's music, honestly, his rap music uh that era of rap you know i i don't mind it but i was just so bored during this movie and it just jumped around it was clearly jumping around his life there's a lot of like just uh monologuing to kind of like quickly get through his life but it felt so haphazard and so i was worried is it really like biopic paint by numbers because it it is absolutely biopic paint by numbers okay um and i like biopics um i one of them made my top 10 of course the disaster artist that's a good biopic from this year. This was just absolutely bland and just jumped around. And everything I've heard even after from people who actually knew him, like Jada Pink and Smith, talking online, it's like saying, no, actually, these situations showing the movies never happened. And yeah, like just basic research told me actually the movie's kind of BS in a lot of ways. So it's just like, why... Why do you even make this? Like, why didn't you at least try to do some research or something? Yeah. And they're skipping major points, like how he became a rapper and stuff. So it's dumb. Don't watch it. Watch Straight Outta Compton. Better movie. 
All right. So my number 23 is King Arthur Legend of the Sword. <laughs> this bland piece of blandness comes from Guy Ritchie, who makes bland movies. I guess it makes sense. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, the guy tries to have a visual style. I'll give him that. Sure. Sherlock Holmes has it, and it's a fun enough movie. You know, it's fine. You know, and The Man from Uncle, which I saw, I think that was like two years ago, it has that same visual style. And same with King Arthur. But the problem is, like, King Arthur is like this like fantasy movie that just does not work with this frenetic action type mm-hmm. direction. And, like, those GoPro shots from the trailer, I always laughed at those. And they're <laughs> in the movie. And it's the most distracting thing ever. You know, it's just, it doesn't hold up. It's just boring. It's bland. You know, there's a, okay, this is how I'm going to finish this talking about it. I don't want to talk about it too long because there's this thing they do to movies now. And it's especially these effects heavy pictures. And maybe, Sean, you'll, you'll notice this. They'll have these big action scenes, right? Right. And they're, they're, they're massive, like vistas covered in soldiers clashing and all this action's going on. In fact, this movie has like giant elephants or something. It's really ripping off. That's right. I forgot about it's that. It's ripping off, you the know, Mama Lord, Kill from Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Return, Return of the King. Of the King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Same Return movie, of the right? Jedi. There's elephants in there. It's ripping off Return of the King. And um, well, I guess the AT AT. Yeah, I was just gonna scene. say actually. I guess um, sure. Um, <laughs> anyway, what I was trying to say. It. What they do is they put all this haze and fog all over everything. Right. So you Why can't do that? see anything. And they do it all the time. They did it with uh, Assassin's Creed. That's they did right. it. In, you know, they do it with these movies, and like some of them I still like, but it's just I can't see anything. I want to see. Is it like see... to avoid bad CG? I, I don't like, know. Maybe it looks us? fake, quote unquote. So Maybe. they try and like dust over it, but it's distracting. You know when you watch. The the final like like um, battle of Gondor yeah and with the, with the Rohirrim charging down the hill mm-hmm. you can see everything it's open you can see the mountains in the background everything's in view and yeah. and this movie does that where it just you can't see and they also do all these shots like really close and really like shaky so there's no like able you're not able to take in the epicness right. it's way too of the movie. yeah exactly this should have been a Lord of the Rings style epic type style movie but it just wasn't even close. Next to that. time they make one of these old timey fantasy epic movies, they gotta watch like Ben Hur, and they need to watch like Ten Commandments, and they need to watch you know yeah. these old Lawrence of Arabia, these old epic movies, Gone with the Wind. What do they do? They have a lot of wide open, massive shots showing what's mm-hmm. happening. You can always tell what's going on. There's never this like frenetic editing. I'm already yeah, talking way even, too long, but yeah, exactly. No, I agree. We that's maybe, just my problem. We can maybe talk about this in another. And I, I will say, I do like Charlie Hunnam. I like him. Sure. It was great in Lost City of Z, which came out this year. It's on my best list. Um, and I don't ha- hate him. Uh, Eric Bann is kind of ridiculous as the, the bad guy. <laughs> That's right. Um, or not the bad guy. He's he's his dad. And then Jude Law's the bad guy. I forgot. Jude, oh, yeah. Jude Law's the villain. That's right. This movie's really forgettable. Oh, but overall, God. yeah, I didn't like this movie. All right. Fair enough. Rant over. My number 23 is Kingsman, The Golden Circle. Oh, my God. Was I disappointed in this movie? Because I really like the first Kingsman. Mm-hmm. This one, it's just like, there are things in it I liked. Sure. Some of the action is still fun and stylized. Okay. It's what I expect to see. But there were just things that just pissed me off. Like, the way they handled certain characters. Like, uh, yeah. the girl, who I always forget her his name. Girl, his for girlfriend. Some reason. His not, his no, no, not, no, not his girlfriend. The, his not the other girlfriend. agent girl. Yeah. When she stupidly dies early in the movie. Spoiler, I guess, but who cares? It's early in the movie. And I was so mad about that. The whole movie, I kept thinking, how would I... Re-? Like, this would be better if she was the one in danger. Because they do that trope, but the girl's in danger and they gotta save her. Why can't they just have her not be a girlfriend and just be her in danger and Eggsy has to, like, save her. Because I actually care about her. But this other girl they have us caring about, I don't give a sh- crap about. Um, so that bugged the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. I like Mark Strong. I like his, I'll just call it the John Denver scene. <laughs> not to spoil that, at least. I think that that's might be my favorite scene in the movie. Because it actually was heartfelt. And did kind of make me a little sad. Because I like that character from the first one, though. Everything's, anything I like, it's like, Carry over from the first one. Nothing new. The one thing I think I liked that's new was I liked Julianne Moore just hamming it up. I was just going to say that. Yes. I I was going to give that one caveat and say at least Julianne Moore, though, as a hammy villain. She's so hammy. Oh, absolutely. That's the best thing. But other than that, there's nothing interesting here. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, so that's my number 22 then, is Justice League. <laughs> God. So people apparently like this movie. And no offense if you like the movie, but this movie is really stupid. It's just like, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. This is one of those movies that just literally everything was exactly what I thought it was going to be. Big dumb action scene after big dumb action scene. No investment. Introduces too much new stuff. In fact, three basically brand new characters that we don't really know anything about besides like single shots of them in um, in Batman v Superman. And we have to introduce all of their backstories. This is something that Avengers knew to do not in their ensemble movie. They did in Avengers 2, they introduced a couple, but they're like side characters. These are like main players that we're introducing right. for the first time. And you gotta, they gotta explain their whole backstory. It's like if in the first Avengers, they just dropped in Thor and Loki. Yeah. Or uh, Captain America or something. Yeah, just like major players, and they're just dropping them in. And not only that, they have to explain their backstory, explain why they joined the team. All of that just needs to be explained, and it's done the most sloppy way. I mean, this movie, obviously, is the vision of two directors. Zack Snyder dropped out. Joss Whedon took over. Mm -hmm. It feels like a, it looks like a Zack Snyder movie. feels like a Joss Whedon movie, and it's, a, it's as messy as that sounds. It really is. I mean, the reshoots are are obvious especially when henry cavill's on screen he has cgi lip on so ugly every shot looks terrible oh, you can God. tell you can tell uh, it's that bad it's i like, hope mission impossible 6 is worth it for him yeah i know well hopefully it's better than this so I, actually i don't blame Ex them at all fair, i'm sure it's better than justice League. They are, what they, i think of mission impossible 6 justice league offered or the um warner brothers offered to pay to cgi his mustache on to, to Paramount, I think it was Paramount, that's Mission Impossible, right? Yeah, yeah they do. I think so. Um, yeah, that sounds right. To pay to put on this CGI mustache because it's, they said it's a lot easier than removing it. Paramount's like, nope, sorry, not going to happen. And you know what? Good for them. <laughs> Sticking in the middle finger to Warner Brothers. They deserve it. They do. This movie is a big, giant, heaping mess. You know, it's just a mess. And mm -hmm. it's not harmful, so it doesn't go any lower on the list because it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. But it's the most forgettable superhero movie in years. You know, it's more forgettable than Batman v Superman. I think it's like almost as bad as Man of Steel in some ways. It's it's really that bad. I'm saving everything I think about because obviously that's on my list. But my next one is number twenty two: Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Good Tales. Um, yes, Pirates of the Caribbean five. By God, I grew up with those movies. I liked the first one quite a bit even two and three i can i like two legitimately and three even i can find things that are good about it four is not good but this is so much worse no one was trying they basically made J uh jack sparrow homer simpson they just took the worst traits about jack sparrow no, they make him like elevated. unlikable like, exactly like an asshole they make him like in this movie like he was kind of you know that way in the first movie but he has a redemption arc yeah you know? and that's the point of the movie is to move his character Mm -hmm. But now they've reset his character. So if you watch they, all the movies yeah. in a row, there's no progression. You know, it's just right. up, down, up, down, up, down. All it's like place. two and three. There's like, yeah, he's still an asshole at times, but he still tries to be like, <laughs> I'm sorry. what? I remember the joke that I laughed at. It is still funny. Remember it What's like the joke? they're in the prison and they're in the cell and like one of them says something funny and then way off screen like far away somebody laughs at his joke. Oh, that's <laughs> right. That's, that was amazing. <laughs> it's funny that I remember the one thing I liked in the movie because it stood out so it much. It stood out because the rest of it was so bad. But yeah, like I was saying, at least two and three, you're right. He is still kind of an asshole in those movies. But he has those. You understand why he's an asshole in the second one, and you he has those moments well, that he has redeem him. Character reasons. There is nothing in the fifth one that redeems him. He's just drunk. Yeah, he's just a drunk, and he's an idiot. Mm -hmm. And they rip up Fast Five with horses. In fact, his own like they. His hold own. On. I want to iterate this for people. Sorry, God. They rip off the bank heist from Fast Five. And they make it that stupider. They use cars. They make it with stupider. horses. Yeah, with horses, and they're pulling the whole bank. I know. The whole building. Not the whole just, entire it, building. Yeah, not just like a little, like, uh, uh. Like, like safe, safe or something, yeah. Uh, the whole building. I think they were going to do a safe and they realized they would be ripping off Fast Five. So they're just like, hey, why don't we just hold, do the whole building? And then they realize, oh, and then I guess they didn't realize that's even worse. But no, no, no. The other problem is his whole crew abandons him because they all hate him. Which I don't blame them. No, yeah. I don't blame them, but it, it ruins the... It's like they what they did... It reminds me of Scooby-Doo. They just screw it up. Sure. The first opening of the movie is them 
disbanding their whole crew and saying, oh, we all hate each other now. And it's like, that's not how you start a movie. That's not exciting. If you're going to have some people think people come to a head, you do it at like towards the end, like in that middle part. Yeah, in, you the, know? in the second act. The second act where you have that conflict. Exactly. You know? That's how stories work. Correct. I, I already talked about this movie. Uh, but yes, Pirates of the Caribbean 5, it sucks. Please be over. I don't care anymore. Yeah, I know, right? Mm. All, All right, right my number, number 21. 21. 50 Shades Darker. So another movie that is exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah. So watching the first one was a chore. It was, <laughs> was horrible. But like even like with the first one, I was like, well... You know, it's well shot. It has, like, things in it that are like, well, that interests my eyeballs a little bit, you know? Like, it's like they almost tried to make a good movie. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, like the, there was, with with Sam Taylor Johnson, who I think is way more talented than than the material she, she worked with, I think she was trying to make a good movie. I think the material is so trashy and so offensive and so terrible that yeah. it was impossible for anyone. I mean, if you gave this to Martin Scorsese, it would suck, you know. But sure, no, I gave I'll them give you that. that little credit. This movie, no, it's just terrible. It's not even like well shot anymore. Like the production design is boring. It's bland. It's it's stupid, and it's just as the only thing that is like they t- they tone down the offensive like womanizing a little bit, but instead <laughs> a they little bit. instead they introduce like really strange awkward subplots and like really like thrilling yep. things mm-hmm. and it's like this is not interesting it's like you know what i got actually i don't remember what we saw first but you know what it reminds me of it's unforgettable another movie it does which is year. also on my list i will talk about that it's but this movie it's not like i guess like what i'm saying is i totally forgot about it like almost entirely so it obviously didn't leave that much of an impression okay on me. i can understand it's that. just it's trash it's cinematic trash you know and it's obvious that this series is successful somehow, so I don't understand it. You know, I really don't. Why do people want to watch this trash and this dribble? But it just, it feels like a Lifetime movie that you're watching in the theater. You know, it's kind of like that kind of feeling. You know, same with the Nicholas Sparks films. You know, it's just like you go and it's like, that was a forgettable piece of crap, you know, and then you just move on with your life. So that's my thoughts on Fifty Shades Darker. I mean, I don't really have much else to say about it, honestly. All right, fair enough. Uh, I'll talk about it later. You're number 21. My number 21 is Cars 3, the movie that literally the next day after I saw it, I was like, wait, what did I do last night? I couldn't remember. <laughs> it, I swear to God, I was not drunk. I don't I don't even do drugs. But it was like a block of time was missing from my memory. Like I was abducted by an alien during those that time Mm -hmm. but no i was just just abducted by a terrible pixar movie cars 3 is so bland and boring it is literally just rocky balboa with uh lightning mcqueen nothing not one thing about this way it was interesting and i they try to do the ending where he's like gonna i guess help this other car to race and stuff but it's like i don't care about any of this the one thing I'll give it is better than Cars 2 because we don't focus on Mater. That's the one thing Pixar That's fixed. True. It's, it's like Mater's barely in he's it. He's barely in it, yeah. It's like Pixar was like, oh god, he's the Jar Jar Banks of the series. we got to get rid of him. <laughs> just barely the thing I want to say it. about Cars, I, I hate to interject on your time. I Go don't want to do that. I just want to say, I actually like the first movie. I'm one of those people I do too. No, that I defends do. it. It's cliched. It's been done before. But I kind of like it, you know? It's a, it's a cute movie. Yeah. And the sequels just don't even come close to the tone. It's like they're completely different types of movies, you know, including this one. They try to do, quote-unquote, heart, but it's so stupid, you know. It's yeah. so cliched that it just doesn't work. No, exactly. Just watch Rocky Balboa. Yeah. Or watch the first oh, Cars. If absolutely. You cars. <laughs> you know, it is better than Rocky Five, though. I'll say that. Yeah, it's better than Rocky Five. I'll give you that. <laughs> it's not better than Rocky, any of the other Rockies, though. I, no. I guess we'll talk about those later this year. All mm-hmm. right. But <laughs> um But yeah, cars we sucked. Anyways, what's your number 20? Number 20 is Triple X: The Return of Xander Cage. Ew. Obviously the most anticipated movie ever, you know, everyone is just dying for Vin Diesel to return to the franchise. Uh, jokes aside, uh Triple X is a forgettable action movie I barely remember. I saw it like probably 7 or 8 years ago. Didn't know <laughs> Triple X: Stay the Union is a delightfully stupid piece of crap that i remember very clearly 
for how ridiculous and dumb it is. Uh, that makes me want to watch. I it's will all say. Is, <laughs> if it wasn't so bland at times, I would almost recommend it. It's so bad, it's good. Okay, it has a lot of moments where you're like laughing out loud, like of how stupid the movie is, especially okay. at the the climax. But Triple uh, X Three is just bland action movie it's so bland nothing like i challenge someone to come up with saying something about triple x return of xander cage that is unique from other action movies one thing because i don't think there is anything unique it's li- like i keep talking about paint by numbers in this video but it's literally just like paint by numbers action you know, I, I, think action that, I think that's fair that's what a lot of these bad movies are they're always just like we don't care just give us your money. Here's a the, paint by numbers movie. The weirdest thing is they try to put in like these extreme sports things. It's kind of like Point Break did the remake. Okay. Point Break remake where they uh, put in all these extreme sports scenes. Like there's a scene where just Vin Diesel's skateboarding down a hill. Yeah, the, I he remember parachutes that from the off like a radio tower, and it's the yeah, it's just really weird. But I mean, I, I have a question: Is it extreme? I guess. Okay. I don't know. That I'm sold. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my number yeah. twenty movie sucks is going in style. The Morgan Freeman, Michael <clears throat> Caine, just boring old man comedy. That's all it is. There were parts I laughed. There was a couple jokes I legitimately laughed at. My favorite part is, of course, Christopher Lloyd. One redeeming thing in the movie. Yes. Um, if you don't mind, do you want me to get, or do you Just want say me to the save it for is, you? Oh, okay. Well, I, I didn't. I lean into you and told. told I was, that. I was kind of sick of that too. Then you leaned into me and literally said. What if Christopher Lloyd wasn't supposed to be there and he just walked in on set and they just let the camera roll <laughs> and started filming crazy old man Christopher Lloyd? He's just like going senile and they're just letting him roam around the set. It's and... hilarious. It makes it makes it even better. It's great. Like he, he just comes up randomly with a birthday cake and they don't set it up at all. And so it really seems like Christopher Lloyd just wanted to randomly celebrate someone's birthday. He's at a buffet wasn't... and he's scooping up corn and scoops it like <laughs> over his head. <laughs> No, he was a delight, but the rest of this movie was so bland and boring, and I love these actors, but it was just, you know... Uh, I'm not saying anything. Yeah, uh, I'll save the rest for you, because I know it's on your list. All right. My number 19, right, uh, is yep. Fist Fight. Oh, God. See, I gave this movie a slight pass because I laughed enough at it. And I was like, okay, it's whatever. Okay, so For this movie is Charlie Day pl- plays the biiggest loser of all time. He does. <laughs> except for David Spade and um, that stupid Adam Sandler, the do-over. He, he is still the biggest loser of all okay. time. This is the second biggest loser of all time. So, sorry, I need to be clear. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm sure the do-over will come up at some point in my life because I can't unsee that movie. Um <clears throat> No, but this movie, yeah, so it's just a dumb movie where Ice Cube challenges uh, another teacher, played by Charlie Day, to a fight. And that's the whole movie. The whole movie it, like plays on that one joke that what if you know two teachers fought instead of two kids? Yeah, it's <clears> a <throat> stupid premise. The, the, the whole movie is like filled with just like awkward, terrible humor, really bad jokes, unfunny, you know, characters and just you know, it's one of those movies that is. It, I hate the comedies that are like in a world that is not like our own, where they're like so ridiculous that it just all believability is removed. You know what I mean? You're not now to specify. You're not talking about parody movies, of course. Let's no, say, not that's a different not parody scenario. movies. And like, there's a time and place for that if it's well done, if it's well written. But I generally hate them, and especially like these really lazy ones. Because they just do it just for, like, outrageous humor. Outrage humor, right? Sure. Like, doesn't this movie have a scene, like, a joke with them painting, like, lines on the field? Don't they do oh, that? Oh, yeah, where they paint, like, a, yeah, yeah. a phallic symbol yeah. on the field. I think that's this yeah. movie. Yeah, it does jokes like that. And it's, like, that's so immature. It's not creative or clever. Yeah, like, you know? I like immature comedy, but I like it when it's done well. Like, there's something about Mary or, God help me, I'll say it, American Pie, where at least... Even the Austin Powers movies, I just rewatched it. Yeah, they have a lot of dumb jokes that are like, okay, that's really stupid and immature. But I was laughing during those movies. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk about this long because but yeah. we're already getting long no, in the yeah, video yeah, yeah. and all that. But it's just a bad movie. I really didn't like it. Okay. My number 19 is The Case for Christ. Um, wow. <laughs> this movie... 
I'll give Pure Flix this. It didn't offend me this time. Which is good. That's a step up for Pure Flix. <laughs> um, it wasn't offensive. Congratulations. <laughs> that's literally what I'm working with for the most part. Um, I was bored. I, I've heard a lot of people, both Christians and non-Christians, say, actually, this is pretty good for a Christian movie. And I'm like, really? I mean, it's not terrible. It's just boring. And you have this guy who's basically a straw man the whole time, this atheist reporter. Who is strong man the entire time to become a Christian. You know it's going to happen. Asking, like, the perfect questions. Yeah. There's, like, one thing. I was like, okay. That question at least makes sense. And that answer makes sense, too. I'll give him that. But other than that, it was just bland, boring. I, I had a bit of an enjoyment because he worked at the Chicago Tribune in the 70s. And in my mind, I'm joking. It's Gene Siskel just off on the side, like, writing reviews. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. That... That was a slight little Easter egg for me in my own mm-hmm. head, but that's nothing to do with the movie. Uh, this movie was bland and boring, and yeah, it's just perfect for pure, boring Christian movies. Um, yeah, that's all I really have to say about this one. All right, my number eighteen is Beauty and the Beast. Yep, <laughs> Disney once again carves out a spot on this list for making. Just stop. Why do you keep making, like, why do they feel a need to remake all of their, like, best animated movies into bland, stupid, forgettable, It's like they want to see if we can make it bad. Like, we did a good job the first time. Let's see if we can make it bad. But that's the thing. You compare the movies, and there's literally nothing, no, nothing that's better. No improvement whatsoever. They don't do anything. They just make everything worse and ruin everything. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly rant about what I hate about this movie. I'm going to let you rant because I have a few rantings myself for this movie. But go ahead. Okay, so first of all, they make the Beast a t- giant asshole. Like, he's unredeemably bad. Because what they do is, in the original, the Beast actually kind of cared. You know, he wanted Belle to have a room in the castle. He tried to treat her like a guest. His anger got the better of him sometimes. And that was his problem, right? But he still had a good heart. And you could see it throughout the movie, even in the beginning. This one, Beast is a giant ass. And then instantly, halfway through the movie, instantly, when he saves Belle from the wolves, he instantly becomes amazing. Like, there's literally no arc. There's no change. It's that fast. Uh, Emma Watson can't sing. Um, There's all of the cinematography is just bland. You know, they don't do anything interesting with the visuals. Uh... Which is a shame. Bill Condon should have learned from his uh, his uh, predecessors and the people he's worked with in the past, like Rob Marshall, and figure out how to shoot a musical because it's not that hard. Um, yeah, and then just the awkward, you know, plot changes like making Gaston a murderer. I just I don't like them. There's just no reason for it. It just makes it make less sense. Make it feel less, you know, like believable. It makes it fall into this trap of just being a nonsensical piece of crap and that's why i don't like it you know i understand a lot of people like this movie and more power to them i just i couldn't get into it because the it just ruined what i think is one of the best i think it's the best disney animated movie i really do i think it's disney animation studios that's their best movie i really do put it up there uh it's just an amazing film so all i can say is please recommend please go see the original beauty and the beast and not this thank you all right, uh, that was Shane Wallach about being the <laughs> that, that I was tried to make nice. it quick. I agree. Uh, no, you're good. Uh, 18 for me is Atomic Blonde or Atomic Bland, maybe I should call it that. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it was. It is John Wick if we didn't care about the character at all. You know what was great about John Wick? Especially the first one. Well, I was, I was just going to say, we care about the character. No, no, it's not even, not even that. It's oh, okay. simple. It's mm-hmm. the simplest of premises. Right. They killed his dog. He wants revenge. Right. That's the story. Can you tell me what Atomic Blonde was about? Because I still don't know. Uh, she's a spy agent or something. They have to keep cutting to these interviews <laughs> to explain what's happening. And it still doesn't yeah, make sense it's, to it's me. It's the most generic setup of, you know, I'm being interviewed by the police or the, I think it's the FBI. Never mind. Uh, but because she did something and we're like, oh, what did she do? Oh, nothing. She didn't do anything. We don't care. Whatever. I, I, I was so uninvested by this movie. I don't remember the plot. I really I don't. Know. I, just... I remember that one you're talking about, and I agree that's the best thing, but I think the rest of the movie, it just I had to put it on the list somewhere. It just kind of pissed me off so much. It, really, John Wick, it's like, we get to know it's him. We get to we understand he's a tragic person. Yes, they keep calling him the boogeyman and make him sound almost supernatural, but at the end of the no, day... No, he's not the boogeyman. He's the one you send Oh, no, kill sorry. The he's the one who's 
sent to kill the boogeyman. He would kill Michael Myers, I guess. Um, <laughs> I suppose. But we at least get that he's a human. You know, yeah. we see him in his day to day life. Well, you before... care about him. Yes, exactly. It's very simple. It's called a, it's called establishing a character. But why they, is this so difficult? But they they do it so simply in John Wick, and it works. It's just basic. But they don't do it at all in the, this movie. Honestly, look at what's considered the best action movies of all time. Nine times out of ten, mm-hmm. they will be very simple premises. Very very yeah, simple absolutely. premises. Absolutely. Die Hard, First Blood, Taken, Raiders of the Lost Ark, even very simple premises. Very simple. This movie sucked. Yeah. <laughs> and and rant. Um, okay. What's All right. your next pick? Uh, what are we on now? Was this number 17? 16? No, it's 17. Number 17 is The Case for Christ. You just talked about this. Go ahead. I'll join in. <laughs> uh, you're right. It's not God's Not Dead. This movie isn't that bad. But it still annoyed me. It, it actually did annoy me a little bit. And I'll tell you why. It's like they set up this interesting question. Like... Can we... Well, first of all, there's a, there's a hidden question that I think is more interesting than the question that they try to answer, which is, can we prove that God exists? I mean, the more interesting question is, was Jesus a real person? Is there evidence that he actually existed beyond just, you know, oral tradition in the Bible, right? And that's, like, kind of interesting. I like... I get in the history of that. I love history. You know, I, wa- I would love to hear more about it. But the answers they give are so, sh- like dodgy and weird and they don't present really any evidence they just kind of argue through uh same old christian like you know straw man arguments that they think atheists make and and it's just it's just wrong you know it's just it's just a false representation of an atheist a real atheist they have an atheist character in it and they try to make him not a stereotype so they actually tried to not kevin sorbo him but they still he still doesn't come off as a real atheist he comes off as you know, what they think atheists are like. Um, you know, he doesn't give any answers. He has no answers. Like, that's what they try to portray atheists. as just, they don't have answers. They just decide not to believe in God. Yeah. Right? And that's like, it's like a choice for them. But it's really, it's not about that. It's like it's, they're a pouting child. I don't feel like believing in God. It's like, no. That's not what any atheist I know, you know, are. You know, the understanding is there's no evidence yeah. for God, so we don't believe in God. Here's that's, the thing. That's how atheists Even work, as right? someone who is a firm Christian, I believe in God and all that. I can at least respect people who don't and understand, okay, I see where you're coming from. This isn't my experience, but I get it. Yeah, I mean, it's just this movie, they try and build it up like like there's this going to be interesting answers. And like all they do is dodge the really interesting questions and like answer the lower middling questions that you don't really care about. Like they have the whole scene where this doctor talks about like the wounds of Jesus and all this. And it's like, and then he was seen by like a thousand people. And it's like, well, eyewitness testimony that's 2000 years old is not necessarily reliable uh, information. Any reporter can tell you that, that eyewitness testimony is basically worthless, right? It, it, it's, Mm -hmm. it's very unreliable testimony. They, they, it's, taken not in very much regard by uh investigators because of that um but that's kind of what the movie hinges on that and like other like indirect arguments for the existence of jesus and it's like you know it's just it's so stupid and i just really didn't get into it. i hate when these christian movies try to make like it seem like obvious that you know jesus and christianity is true and anyone who just doesn't believe in it just doesn't understand really they just don't get it they haven't thought it through it enough and that, that bothers Yeah, me. all those atheists are stupid. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, right, my number, let's see, 17? Yep. Before I Fall. God, was this movie bland? This is just bland. You're right, Groundhog Day. Um, YA movie. And I don't care about the lead. I don't care about what's going on. It's just her, I guess, being redeemed. Like, she's supposed to help this. Basically, Carrie White looking girl um that's the only thing i was thinking the whole time speaking of classic horror references i gotta bring this little nitpick i guess i'll call it because i remember there's a scene where they're making fun of this girl who's this dowdy creepy well not creepy but she's called creepy is what i mean yeah looking girl and they call her norman bates there's no way these dumb teenage popular Bitchy girls would know who the hell Norman Bates or Psycho or Alfred Hitchcock is. They don't set up that they are anywhere lovers of film. And that I turned to you and I said, there's no way in hell. I remember this, turning to you and saying, there's no way in hell that they would know who the heck this Norman Bates is. That reference made no sense to me. That is a director 
or a writer, more likely, putting that reference in because they know who Norman Bates is and not realizing that's not how teenagers talk, especially in this day and age. So, no, that it's just, I don't care about any of the characters. The lead character is a bitch, and it sucks. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, <laughs> not defending that movie. All right, next up, I got number 16, The Belko Experiment. So, yeah, I have this lower than you because, and it's just very simple. The movie grossed me out. It made me almost sick. Okay. It's just so violent. And it's not like I can't handle violence in movies. I, I watch violent movies all the time. You know, when they're used, you know, tastefully and effectively in the narrative and it's to serve the story and to tell the, you know, the story effectively, you need violence. And I absolutely understand that. But when you just have over the top guts, gore, every, you know, blood all over the place and it's just tons of killing senseless murder you know that's what this movie is that's the premise right um and it's just like it did, didn't make me feel good it just made me feel sick i understand the movie that theater. the problem is i like those i like horror movies with you know gore and stuff i'm fine with that but you gotta give me a character to like wolf creek does the same thing i don't care about any of the characters i didn't care about any of the characters the Bogle experiment so i entirely get where you're coming from yeah and that's the other thing you know just everything's forgettable yeah. you know not interesting at all the premise is the only thing that held a little bit of interest. I heard there was another movie that did like a really similar premise yeah, I forget that was what more it's comedic. Called. Apparently, it's good. Yeah, apparently, it's a lot better. So maybe I'll check that out eventually. But yeah. Okay, my number fifteen is Rock Dog. <laughs> God, what's this movie bland? It is entirely filler. It's the most bland. Not good animation. It's mm-hmm. a really bad 3D animation. It's just this kid wants to become a rock star, so he goes and finds his famous person, and his famous person is a douche. Hole and yeah, yeah, that's they, it. that plot. How many times has that been done? I've never seen it done actually. Oh, ever? No, never. Right. Uh, God, it's so cliche. And the whole movie's filler. I remember it's like 20 minutes of story, and then the, uh, it, whatever it is, 60 minutes or whatever of filler. Mm-hmm. It's awful, bland, at boring. least it's short. That's right. Yeah, the reason it's higher on my list is because it at least is forgettable, mercifully, mercifully forgettable. forgettable. So there's that. But yeah, it sucked. J.K. Simmons, that's one of the voices. That's what I remember. Mm-hmm. And that's just because I like J.K. Simmons. <laughs> All right. And number 15, I also have an animated film. It's called The Emoji Movie. Um, yeah, so everyone hated on The Emoji Movie. And I absolutely understand. The movie's stupid. And the movie is a shameless, you know, full of in-product placement and stupid, stupid crap. And it's like, but, and I really, I feel like I'm the one who has to just like, justify why it's higher on my list at this point because everyone hates this movie so much Uh, it's just because it's exactly what i thought it was going to be and it doesn't really it's not really harmful you know it's all not even all that like annoying it's just like annoying that it exists that's all it is annoying about it to me i when i was watching it i was just like you know it 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 was actually i'd say it's almost like better in some ways than some illumination movies because it feels like at least during some of the animation, they were like trying to make the world look visually interesting. And um, Illumination doesn't do that. Everything's bland. It's just a city with talking animals every time or something. You know, sure. just like, and Rock Dog did the same thing. That's why Rock Dog's lower on my list because it's just more bland. This movie, they like they make a world and it's like, okay, there seem to be some sort of imagination. It's in like here. the animators maybe were at least trying. Yeah, the animators like try a little bit, I think. And that's what saved the movie for me because it's like some of the worlds they create and some of the apps that they show, it's like, okay, this is a little interesting visually. And I mean, I mean when I say that, we're talking relative here. You know, it's still bland, stupid movie, but we're, we're talking about in the relative of a bad movie. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. You know, and the movie, it's just cliched. It's just dumb cliche animated movie. People hate it so much because of the name. I really think that's what it is. If this was a different like type of uh, like movie, if it had different type of characters but just took the same story, it would just be one of those forgettable anime movies that nobody talks about. But because it's called the Emoji Movie, that's why I think it got so much hate, and that's why I don't really put it lower on my list. I don't. I'm not biased against it because it's the Emoji Movie. I just I think it's a bland, boring, stupid animated movie that should never have been made. But did it like harm me or hurt me? Or make me, you know, angry throughout the movie? No, it didn't. So that's why it's where it is. Okay, fair enough. Uh, my number fifteen is King Arthur, Guy Ritchie's movie. This is 
my first Guy Ritchie movie, I believe. Yeah, it is. And <laughs> that, really what depressing. a sad, depressing way to start. I feel like I have to go see Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels just to, like, even this out. Because this movie, guys, is terrible. And, yeah, I could definitely see a style being shown in this movie. I just didn't like that it was in this movie. It, I agree with everything you said. Literally, you said everything I think I could say about it. Terrible movie. Best thing about it is it's forgettable. Um, yeah, it's just... It annoyed me because it was so such a waste of time and a wasted opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I, I talked a while about that one. Yeah, so I think I, I'm just going to take your thoughts on that one. Didn't that's mean to okay. steal your thunder, but yeah. Um, um, no, that's fine. <laughs> next up, my number 14 is Unforgettable. So one of us is going to make the joke. So I guess it'll be me. Go ahead. This movie was very forgettable, ironically. It is very forgettable. There was that. Was that hilarious? Did you guys see that one coming? No, um, not at all. No, just this movie. It's like I kind of feel bad for Katherine Heigl because it's like she's so desperately trying to have a career and she just, they won't let her. You know, knocked up and then it's like, oh, sorry, that was it. Congratulations. You had your one good shot. Yeah, you know, and you know, it's like this movie is exact. Again, I say this so much. This is exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's just. That really low rate garbage thriller, you know, that we get every year. We get every every year. Boy next door. No good deed. Perfect guy. Unforgettable. This year it'll be like Tyler Perry's Acrimony. I'm sure that looks kind of. Well, weird. yeah, I get uh, to see that. I can't wait. And you saw T- Temptation, which is the same movie. Yeah, exactly. it's always that kind of movie. That's just really cliched, annoying movie where there's someone who's crazy. Every time it's the same thing. Why all of a sudden? I'll just say this much before you know to preview. Why all of a sudden do we want to re- remake Fatal Attraction a hundred times? That's what they're doing. They're just remaking a movie that was pretty good, and then they're just like, oh, From let's the just late do it. 80s, so it's even like really, a really lazy old. version of that. That's all they're mm-hmm. doing. You know, they're just taking it and just taking elements from it, and then just adding filler and blandness. Yeah. You know, and every time they like try and change up the premise, it's like the most simplistic change. Ever so, it's like in this one, she Rosario Dawson is the new girlfriend slash fiance. I don't remember what she what she was even. I think she was a fiance, but um, yeah, of, of her ex husband be and they got divorced because you know she's creepy weirdo, and now she's gonna be a creepy weirdo and you know ruin Rosario Dawson's life because that's you know what yeah. creepy weird people do. I mean this. As I'm saying this, I'm thinking, oh, perfect guy. Oh, you know, the like, boy next door. This movie <laughs> has strange memories because it's the same again movie again. I hate that. And it's like, can I put it any lower? No, because it's just the same movie. You know, it's just and it's yeah. super forgettable. And it's like, oh, here we go again, you know. But, yeah, it just annoyed me. It made me mad. Don't see it. That's fair. All right, my number 14 is one that I'm sure you'll have more to say, so I'll keep it short. Rings. This movie was just a bland, bland horror movie. And it's so sad because I love the first one. I think the first one's spectacular. I like, I, I mean the first American one. The first Japanese one is also spectacular. They're both really good movies. Okay, I know we disagree on that. But, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're just doing science. But anyway, um, this movie is just bland and boring. I, get, I give it. I don't want to say the word credit, but I guess I could see that they were at least trying to do something new with, like, this weird circle, like, Cult of Ring or something. Which, all I was thinking about was the not-used Freddy vs. Jason script, the Cult of Freddyites. I'm not kidding. That was a real plot point they were going to do at one point. Thank God they didn't do that. And well, I got just, to see what that would look like in Rings. They just make a feature-length version of that terrible short film they made back in 2003. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Rings. It was yep. called Rings, so, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's just nothing interesting about what's going on. And they don't really take the character of Samara in any interesting places. And let's say what it is. The ending is so confusing. I you know, know what I'm talking about? Or do you remember this? I barely remember this. Please tell me again what happened. Do you want me to? Okay, I'll spoil it for the audience. Oh, I I guess. Nobody cares. It's rings. Yeah, you're right. It's the... Well, she I know apparently... Vincent D'Onofrio is blind and chasing her around the house. No, 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 no that's that fine. I'm talking about the ending ending. Okay. The, where they're like, they think it's safe, and then the computer starts screwing up, and the video starts oh, popping up right. a lot. You remember this now? Yeah, because And he's they're... like, he's doing the, he, 
there's a message in Braille, and he's like on Google on some Braille like to English translation or something. And I guess his girlfriend's now turning into Samara or something, or she's possessed by That's Samara. Right. And then they're like, what? The? They do this thing like where they're hinting like it's going to go online. Yeah, it's like going to turn to fear.com. Was that yeah. movie sucks? Don't do that. Yeah. My God, you have, I don't well, even talk about seen that. But this later. yeah, rings. Uh, it's just bland, really dumb, and yeah, it did annoy me. But I feel like you have more to say, so I'll leave it at that. All right, my number. What is this? Thirteen. Fourteen. Oh, 13 for you. Sorry. Thirteen. You're right. My number thirteen is Flatliners. Uh, another <laughs> one I've already talked about, so I'll keep this short. Uh, yeah, this movie. My God, I mean, how, way to take a great movie and ruin it. You know. I like the original Flatliners quite a bit. I think it's actually a really underrated movie. I recommend everyone check it out. It's got some great cinematography, really good production design, really interesting premise. I second this, by the way. Yeah, and then they took the new one, and they removed the interesting cinematography, they removed the interesting production design, they removed the good actors, and they add blandness. And that's what it is. Yep. Know? It's just... I just don't like this movie, because it just it literally takes a dump on the original, and it's like... There's no reason. They could have made it a sequel, which kind of would have been interesting. And they even have Kiefer Sutherland in there for a couple scenes. It, it's just like But he a plays a different role. character. Yeah. And, you know, they have this the whole... They just rediscover, you know, the same thing. And it's I, like... Do you remember... There's a moment in the movie where he even hints he kind of knows what's going on. They do like a Why little, not just have it be a sequel then? Like, what if he's like, oh my gosh, are you doing the same thing? Like, that would make sense. Yeah, well, it, it make Kiefer bigger in the movie, because why yeah. not, you know? He's your best actor there. And, Sorry, Ellen Page. Yeah, and, uh, you know, make it a sequel. That would have been a lot more interesting. That's the weird thing. I don't know why they decided to just remake it, you know? It's just, it's lazy, boring, stupid, you know? It's one of the better bad horror movies of the year, so I'll give it that. It's definitely but, not the worst remake or even the worst horror remake I've ever seen. That's for sure. But, oh, well, No. But I'll talk about it. But uh, um, it's just a forgettable, stupid movie. My number 13 is a movie that had Justice League. Okay. It's a movie that has things that I... Sure. Were there funny moments that Joss Whedon, I'm sure, put in? Yeah, sure. The Flash and Superman, fine. It's fine that they're race. This is the arguments I've heard from people that like it. I'm like, yes, that's fine. Whatever. It's Unless funny. Joss Whedon. It's totally Joss Whedon. Uh, it's obviously Joss Whedon. That's yeah. totally his humor. Um, God, was this movie stupid. It just pissed me off. And I think it, this movie actually depressed me. And just because I like comic book movies. I, I, yeah. No secret. I like it more than you do. And that's fine. But this movie, it was like, no. Comic book movie. It, it actually like depressed me. Walking out of theaters, I'm like, comic book movies. They're, oh, I'm so mad. DC is dead to me. I want. I'm, this is my official stance. Except I wrote Patty this Jenkins. on Facebook. This is my official stance. DC, except for Patty Jenkins. <laughs> Patty Jenkins does anything. I will. I will Wonder Woman too. Yes. Patty Jenkins does. Just let her do all the damn work. Get rid of Zack Snyder. Damn that square. And just let her do all the damn work. Because she's the only one who understands any of these characters, how to make a good movie out of them. This movie was awful. It just pissed me off. Had a stupid... Pro- I'm sorry, I have to rant about this. Purple mutant bad guy again. Stephen Wolf. At least. At they least didn't even... with Thanos, who is the same thing. I know, but at least they've been setting him up for That's several true. movies. They didn't even do like... It's funny, they didn't even do Dark Side, which is like the big, you know... Right? Like the one everyone wanted to see. At least in Avengers, Loki was already a, a loved character, you know, that people yeah. didn't want to see. And this... It was so weird. Like, why would they choose Steppenwolf? You didn't even know who Steppenwolf was. I, I kept having to ask you, who was that villain character? And I'm a freaking comic book movie fan. Like, mm-hmm. I, how, okay, DC. I know, obviously, Disney's going to tell you your cigarettes because you're rivaling comic book movie franchises here. But can't you look at the Marvel movies and see how they set that up? It's very simple. If, like... Everyone knows this. How do you not know it? You have to set up the characters first before you get to your big movie. I don't care about any of these characters. I'm not interested in the Aquaman movie. DC's dead to me. Yeah, the end. <laughs> Absolutely. Fair enough. All right. Uh, my number, what, at 12? Is The Circle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll let you go first. This is higher on my list, of course. Uh, go ahead. The Circle, The Circle, The Circle. So... 
I started reading the book and I got like bored and I stopped. I <laughs> never went back to it because it was just. You know, that's a bad sign where even the source material. Yeah, start even off the good. source material kind of sucks. And this movie is much worse than that. It's like, this is the most boring movie of the year, just in terms of just absolutely just incompetent storytelling. Like, mm-hmm. what is this movie trying to say? It's like the most forced, ham fisted, anti technology, anti big brother message. You know, it's just, if you want to watch a movie like this, this is a great one. It's called 1984. It's a fantastic movie. You know, it, it, you should go watch that. It's the same premise, type of idea, much better execution. So I recommend everybody go see yeah. 1984. It's kind of a forgotten little movie, too. Um, but with this film, yeah, it's just a Or how blend. even the thriller elements of technology, Enemy of the State. Go see that. That's right. No, Enemy of the State is a lot better version of this. You know, you're right. You're absolutely right. This movie, it doesn't have any, like, the thrills or the interesting plot. It's just boring, bland, uh, company movie. It's yeah. like it kind of reminds you if they like of the Social Network, but they made it like really bland and like super ham-fisted message into the Social Network. There you go. That's <laughs> because you know the Social Network it it has something called subtlety when it examines Facebook as a concept, right? And it talks about how you know it kind of it, it tries to like sneak in certain messages about social media and stuff like that yeah this movie is like in your face blatant to the point of like i'm spoiling a movie here i'm sorry go ahead killing eller coltrane by having him drive a truck a drone stupidly flies in his face yeah and he like drives out the cliff and it's like the stupidest thing and and then they barely react like they nobody acts like a human being emma watson's like oh no my friend is dead no like she kind of reacts a little bit but then tom hanks is like ah it happens. You it's know? only our company that just did that. Yeah, it, it, nobody acts like a real human being. That's what really distracts me about this movie. Everybody acts like a cartoon. And uh, I hated it. And then the movie has a non-ending ending. It's what I call a movie oh that just God. decides to end without actually We're wrapping screwed. up. <laughs> well, that's not what he says. He says something well, a little I bit know, more but uh, I'm trying to keep non-family this. friendly. I just want to point out that, that Tom Hanks does drop the F-bomb. He does. Which made me snicker a little bit. It is funny hearing him drop the F-bomb. Because I'm not used to it. Yeah. He um, like, never does. That's true. Yeah, but this movie just decides to end without like wrapping up the plot or trying to give you a satisfying conclusion. And unfortunately, it features Bill Paxton's last film role. <laughs> don't don't take it all all of that away. Can I have to mention that as well? Okay. I agree. That's all. It's I terrible. Agree. Okay, my number 12 is Flatliners, the remake. I agree, this movie is so bland, and I agree with everything you said about the original and this remake. This remake's just pointless. There's nothing new here, nothing interesting, nothing at all. It is just a bland carbon copy of the original. With It's like if they took the original, like the architecture and the great look of it, and literally said, let's just film it in a room with white walls. <laughs> like, that's my equivalent that's they did. See, a way to compare the two. It looked as sterile as a hospital bedroom. Like, that's about as bad as we're talking here. This movie, it's just nothing interesting, man. And yes, is it better than Ben-Hur remake or the Point Break remake? Oh, yes, it is. I don't want to misconstrue here. Is it better than other remakes? Yes. It's still a terrible remake. Just the original. Yeah. All right. Uh, my number 11 is Rock Dog. So, yes, you discussed this. I'll, I'll just justify why I think it's worse than the Emoji movie because I know we disagree on that. So I'll, I'll just tell okay. you my reasons because, you know, I can remember more of the Emoji movie than I remember from Rock Dog. And what I do remember from Rock Dog is things I hate. You know, it's just like Eddie Izzard plays just this most stereotypical, like unlikable but slowly turning into a likable character ever. You know, I'm so sick of this cliche. I'm so sick of, like, the character who's mean but then turns out to be good in the end and have a good heart, you know. How many times have we seen that type of story? It's just, ugh. You know, that's just what really annoys me. And the movie is just, as I said, the animation is terrible. It's bland. It's boring. You know, there's no money was put into it. It's obviously a really budget title. Oh, yeah. I don't even know why we saw it, to be honest. I don't remember. Um, I think it was, it looked so stupid we wanted to yeah. see it. <laughs> we were one of the only ones. So I guess, and you know, and yeah, just like the humor wasn't funny. I didn't laugh once at the movie. It was just not really creative. It was not interesting. Everything was bland, boring, stupid. And just annoying. You know, this movie just annoyed me more than the Emoji movie. And that's just what it came down to, you know. 
They both were bad, absolutely. But which one annoyed me more? It was Rock Dog. Which one bored me more? It was Rock Dog, you know? At least the Emoji movie, it's cockamamie premise keeps you kind of interested in that way, you know? It's like, this is such a weird movie that it almost, like, invests me a little bit just by that stretch alone. What is interesting about the premise of Rock Dog? How many movies have we seen talking movies in before? Speaking of, why are there animals? Why are they animals? What's the reason? What's the storytelling reason to make them animals? It's an animated movie, and kids like animals. I know! That's my reason. See, they gotta stop doing this. They, they keep making animated movies featuring animals for no reason other than the fact that... Because they're in a city! They live in houses! There's like a... Everything is just human. It reminds me of freaking what is it? What's that movie that that Rob Schneider one? Uh, the polar oh, bear. Uh, Norm in the north. Norm in the north. It's yes. the same thing. Yes. That's this it's movie. Exactly that. That's why I didn't like this movie because it reminded me of Norm in the north. Okay, so yeah. Sorry, Rock Dog sucks. I think they Go think ahead. Pixar can get away with it, so we can do it too. But they don't understand that Pixar, well, Pixar is Pixar, the same character. Wait, wait, but Pixar when they do talking animal movies. They're well, actual... I, I guess I'm not just talking about talking animals. I'm talking stuff like Cars too, where it's a whole world of an inanimate object, or it's a whole world of animals or something. You oh, know? well, like Bugs Life. Yes, we're in the real world, but I'm we're just... really in the bug world, and there's a bug. But that's what I'm saying. Every stuff. movie, they don't live in houses like Ratatouille. You know, he's a literal sure, rat. You know, sure, in the human world, and like in You're Finding right. Nemo, they're fish in the human world. You know, there's no there's no ham fisted. We're making a world of, and I, I hate to pick on movies like Zootopia because they're actually yeah, good, I was, yeah, I was good versions say, of this. Zootopia is a good version of this. Yeah, so <laughs> Disney does it better, but you know, just yeah, let Disney do it anyway. Yeah, my number eleven is Snatch, the terrible Goldie Hawn and um, Amy Schumer comedy buddy road trip <laughs> movie. I guess plane trip to South America where they get kidnapped by drug smugglers or. Something. Just kidnappers who hate America generically hate America. And that's it. I think that's all I got or all I remember from it. Um, it's not funny. It's really dumb. The funny joke is in the trailer about one in four women in uh, this country go missing. See? One, two, three. Someone's missing. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny. It's in the trailer. Just go watch the trailer uh, so you can see the it. The actress. What's her name? Oh, so, yeah. Oh, what's her name? I feel bad. Wanda she, Sykes. Yeah. She delivers she sells it. that. She did deliver that really well. Yeah. She might be the best part of this movie, I guess, because... <laughs> oh, and Holy Hodge, she's like a classic actress from the... She's the back series. now. Aren't you happy? Back. It's not a satisfying other way. I guess we'll talk about her in a little <laughs> She'll bit. She'll come up. She'll come up, but it's, yeah, dumb, boring, comedy, mm. and just really stupid jokes. I think the reason it's just annoying me is because I hate comedies that don't make me laugh even at all. Yeah, absolutely. So there's that. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a sec. Okay, top ten. Sorry, uh, we're trying to not make this video yeah, too long. Yeah, sorry, we'll we're keep going. a little too long, but we got ten more. All right, Death Note, my number ten. Ugh. So, I'm not an anime fan. I'm just going to preface this by saying that, because... A lot of people like, you know, I, I get it. You know, I get it. There's something about anime I totally understand. You know, it's a little too convoluted and weird for me. But I like some anime. I like Miyazaki, you know. You know, I like some of the films I've seen that are anime. So I think there's potential. Sure. First of all, the weird thing is they make so they make this live action adaptation, American adaptation of an anime. So it's like Ghost in the Shell, you know. They're doing that again, I guess. Um, but what they do is like they make it so stupid, bland, insultingly annoyingly like unbelievable you know because they basically the premise of the movie is he finds this what is it this book i think with like notes in it and everything you write in the book comes true i For think what I, i've never seen the anime either actually this time but yeah uh, i think if he writes the name of a person they die I think that's why I remember the premise. I, that's why I remember the premise being for the anime. And so that's kind of interesting. Then he like so he decides to start killing like bad people, and like the world calls it like some like vigilante thing, and they're trying to find the person who's mysteriously killing all these criminals. And then he has this girlfriend, and they they get together, and she is like a psychopath because she's like, "We gotta kill people, yeah!" They're like celebrating <laughs> that they're murdering people, what so they're the like hell? they're horrible people. These two. They're horrible people. There's nothing redeeming or interesting about them. They're just, the whole premise is supposed to keep you invested. And it dies down really fast. You know, Willem Dafoe barely has anything to do. He just kind of, like, is a voice role. But all his, like, character does 
is just sit in the shadows and kind of just look creepy. That's his role, you know? I don't even really know why he's in the movie. Um, yeah, the movie just was really disappointing, you know, from something that could have been an interesting premise. Completely wasted, so cliched and stupid, and nothing interesting about it. Okay. My number 10 is Beauty and the Beast, because, my God, this movie... I agree with everything you said. It's terrible. And I think part of the reason it's so low is just because I don't think it's, I think it's way overrated. And I just want to really sell it into this movie because this movie, it took this amazing animation movie, animated Disney movie that I grew up on that I love. And maybe there's a bit of biasness then, but it just trashed it, just threw it around the room and beat it up and socked it and left it out of the, in the back for dead. Like, that's exactly what it did to the anime movie. Yeah. It's like, they didn't care, and they tried to sell, like, oh, we're going to make this amazing live-action retelling. But all the characters are unlikable. Emma Watson's bell is just snarky and bitchy, mm-hmm. and I don't care. And I think that's the way she's playing it, and that's what it ruins it. It's not even just the writing. I mean, the writing doesn't help, I guess, but... It's mostly the way she's playing, the way I'm sure she was directed. It's nothing like how Belle is. Uh, I'm sorry, can I bring up that one scene? No, no, no. I, I think you do a better way of saying it. This is what I was leading to, so I was hoping you'd jump in. Because that one scene, I think, exemplifies everything yeah, go wrong ahead. with this movie. So, in the original, um, during the, the, the Belle sequence, the song sequence, right towards the end of that, Gaston you know, walks up to her and proposes to Belle. Right. And says, you should be my wife. And then she's like... Yeah, no, that's all right. Not going to happen. But she says it like polite in the original. You know, she's polite. She said, no, no thanks. And then she walks out and she's like, could you imagine me and Gaston? That's ridiculous. And she's making fun of the whole idea. In the new one, Emma Watson is rude to Gaston, like mean, and then slams the door on him and then like starts to get angry at the thought. Yeah, like she's actually offended that this guy would ask her. Even, okay, yeah, he's a douchebag. Sure, but... Sure, but... That just reflects like, poorly on her. God. In the original, she comes off as the better of yeah, the two, right? absolutely. She's above it. You know, she's like, oh, could you imagine how ridiculous me with Gaston? It's just like she's a condescending bitch in this version. I know. And it makes her so unlikable. Unlikable, absolutely. It's just like Beast. He's a horrible person. And Everyone's horrible. In the wolf scene, when, you know, he's attacked by wolves, I'm like, you know, you can leave him in the woods. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, yeah, this movie sucked. And I don't get why people like it. I think they're just blind and nostalgic. It sucked. Yep. You're number nine, sir. My number nine is Snatched. Yep. Woo! We're going to talk about this now. Go ahead. And you just talked about it. I'm going to second you and say, yes, this movie is so unfunny. So unfunny. So boring. So predictable. So predictable. It's like one of those, like, you know, tries to be like an adventurous comedy. I, I hate these type of movies that try to have, like, an adventure you know, like, Jumanji did this a lot better, um, but I still didn't really like it. But that's, like, the good version of this. Um, this is just, like, so bland. First of all, I, I don't think Amy Schumer's that funny. I thought Trainwreck was good, like, despite Amy Schumer. Like, she was just... I think I gave her a pass in Trainwreck, but then I watched she did stand-up fine. with her, and she's not that funny. I no, think you're right. she's not. And, and I don't like her brand of humor. I don't really like her... In this, mo- I don't like her character at all in Snatched. Like mm-hmm. I thought she, I was, she was really unlikable. At least in Trainwreck, she's a little bit more likable. Um, and it, it's a very atypical romance film, which made it work. You know, yeah. This movie is like a mother daughter movie that is typical as hell. Oh god. This is exactly what you th- see in every other mother daughter movie that ever existed. But you know, it's just done so lazily. You know, the one thing I'll say about this movie is Goldie Hawn is trying, and she's kind of charming still. Sure. Yeah, you know, she is. Fair. She's a little bit charming, and I think given the right material, I'd love to see Goldie Hawn do more movies, right? You know, I think that it's not a bad thing that she's back. It's just too too bad she chose this movie, because this script yeah. isn't, isn't worthy of anything. It's not worthy of direct video you know, even. That's how just lazy and bland this script is. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I'm not going to talk about it anymore, because you already talked about it. But I just, yeah, the movie sucks. That's fair. My number nine is the Emoji Movie. I I will agree with you on this movie to a point. I think the animation is actually like they were trying and they actually made an interesting anime world. You're right. What annoys me about this movie is how much of a product placement it is and that's all it is. It is what or just basically Wreck-It Ralph. The entire story is just the script for Wreck-It Ralph, change a few names, and we have the Emoji movie. Um, 
The best part of this movie is Patrick Stewart as Poop saying, we're number two. We're number two. Just because I want to I imagine Patrick Stewart in a recording booth saying we're number two and saying that he's Poop. It's, it's just funny to me, even in a sad way. Um, but what annoys me is it's just over product placement to kids. To kids who yeah. shouldn't honestly even have cell phones. Maybe that's my, you know... Whatever personal thing, I don't think kids should have cell phones. But well, kids what are we talking about? Kids movie. like little kids who'd be watching this movie having oh, okay. smartphones is what I mean. Yeah, because I'm like 12, 13. No, no, they're not watching this movie though. Probably, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. I'm talking like six year olds, mm-hmm. five year olds, like my niece. Yeah, watching this movie and being like, "Can I get an Instagram account?" God no! Don't promote that to kids. What the hell's wrong with you? Video games, I get. Well, and they make all these Toy like Story, really lazy jokes. Yes, like, with exactly all of the apps. You know, yep. the most lazy jokes you can possibly imagine. Uh, yeah. Everything about it was dumb, and it just pissed me off how much of product placement it is. But everything else, I I give you that. I'll give you everything else. You That's weird. I was having to like defend the movie, but I feel like you know it gets so much hate. I don't. No, it's not. I don't like, know it's not the add. worst movie of the year. I, I don't get that, and I do think there is a much hit, there is a bit of like a oh it's the emoji movie, so we have to hate it. Yeah, but I think a part of it deserves it though. Oh sure, it's definitely not good. Anyway, um, my next movie number eight. Uh, number eight is Going in Style. Oh, go ahead. So I know I hated this more than you. Oh, for sure. Apparently. <sighs> I'm sorry. These old people movies bother me. Okay, I just the uh, same thing with like those low brow thrillers. You know, just this movie comes along every. It's like, I call it the new Last Vegas. I've never even seen Last Vegas, but every movie, every year they come out with this movie featuring a bunch of old people, and they just expect like all these old people to go flock to see it. You know, <laughs> all the humor is like. It's like so... that second exotic or the Marigold Hotel. Those two movies with um. I wanted. To, I, I keep wanting to say McGonagall, Maggie then, Smith, yeah, I, and Jimmy Dench, yeah. I wanted to give those more credit. I haven't seen them, but I heard they're like better than this. Like they are better than Going to Style for sure. The second one, the one I've seen, it, it is definitely better. Yeah, but that feels like the female, but it the seems grandma like, version. It, it seems like more harmless. This movie's trying to be funny, and it's like really awkward the humor, like the whole time. Okay, for sure. And I said this at the time, and I think I'm going to second it. I think it's one of the most boring movies I've ever seen, ever. In my life. <laughs> I had this like expression of just like my soul had been sucked out of my body during watching this movie. You know, like the movies above this list, they offended me, right? Going in style didn't like offend me, but it bored me to tears, you know? Like it bored me so much that it didn't make me even want to like fall asleep. It just was so boring. It was like engaging my brain with how boring it was. Like I couldn't understand how boring what I was watching was i know that sounds contradictory and weird but that's what was happening in this movie i was so bored during everything about this movie and by the way this movie is about like a bank robbery heist i don't know how they made that boring. old man bank robbery heist. yeah that's what this is it's, it's so bland and they do like these weird cliches and like they talk on the phone at night and i don't know like they do it all the time i remember that yeah uh, i remember this i remember alan arkin steals a pork loin Runs. And then he's running out, and he can't run away fast enough. So he it. loses his breath and so he gives up. Yeah. And they do, like, a car chase with a security guard from the grocery store. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. That's the this. humor of going in style. Doesn't that sound just so funny? You know, and it's too bad, because, like you said, the people are talented. You know, Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine, Alan Arkin are mm. all really talented guys. Absolutely. You know, I like I love all of them. You know, and they all do much better work in other movies. But in these kind of boring, bland... I should just see Last Vegas. I know I'm going to hate that movie. It has a higher Rotten Tomatoes score, so maybe I shouldn't, like, judge it too much. But, you know, it's just... Those kind of movies just bother me. Bucket List is kind of like that, but I actually like Bucket List. I've heard good things about the Bucket yeah. List. I haven't seen it either. It feels like one of those that would be that, but it's like they really tried. Yeah. I know. Uh, I believe it's Rob Reiner who directed that, I think. Yeah, I think that was yeah, I think the later was. Rob Reiner so, movie, yeah. You know, overall a good director, so at least so. Uh, that's I, the word overall. But let's at move one on. time, yeah, recently, let's move on. I don't know. Okay, uh, yeah, moving on. That yeah, boring, most boringest movie I've ever seen in my life. Fair I agree enough. With my review. Number eight is Tyler Perry's Food Two of Medea Halloween. Maybe I made you go see. God, I hate you. 
I hate you so much. Okay, I you have to admit, if one of us was going to say that's true, you were the Tyler Perry expert, and you're the horror movie I'm expert. Not, I wouldn't call myself a Tyler Perry. You expert. saw Temptation. I didn't. I saw it just to see how bad it would be, and it was horrible. I haven't seen any Tyler Perry movies, so yeah, you had Single Moms Club. That's right, you dragged me to that. I did. Because we had to watch how bad it was going to be. So you made me watch Single Moms Club. I make you watch Boo 2. Fine, fine. Boo 2 is god-awful. There's not one joke that's funny. I don't know what this movie is trying to be. I think it's trying to be a parody of horror movies because of a few jokes that feel like parodies of Friday the 13th and The Ring and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I guess. I think that's as best as I could detect what they were doing. But it was... Uh, Stupid! It's so bland. It makes Scary Movie Five like look like a comprehensive comedy. That you know, I was like, God, I'd rather be watching any of the Scary Movie films. I'd rather be watching. I know what you. Or I still know what you did last I Friday the Thirteenth. Whatever the hell that one is. No, 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 no. The parody of that. The no, I, I. Oh, is it? I Shriek? still know what you did. No, it's called Shriek. If you know what Shriek, I did you know last, what I did Friday, last the Friday the Thirteenth. I'd rather watch that a million times. What is the? What's the Paranormal Activity one? What's it called? Oh, the par- Paranormal Activity. Yeah, it's like the thirty-one. Oh, I'll that, look it up. A really dog. stupid title. Anyway, I don't know what this was. It's just like. Dumb jokes. Medea talks really loud, and these other black people talk really loud. So it's black stereotypes, by the way, was I find it extremely offensive. Here we go. Um, Thirty. What's it called? Thirty nights of paranormal activity with the devil inside the girl with the dragon tattoo. So there's four titles in there, okay. and they literally just stacked the titles together. They didn't right. like do anything clever. I. Uh, that would probably be worse, to be fair. But <laughs> you think? I I think that uh, it might run. Give it a run for its money, at least. But this movie, nothing was funny. I think I snickered once at something that was so dumb that I was like, okay, I have to laugh a little bit at something because I'm so desperate to laugh at this damn comedy. Yeah, it's it's terrible. <laughs> I, I, it, the reason it's high enough is it's forgettable, but I also remember how much it pissed me off and how much from literally the first second to the last second, I was just like, I want to die. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. What's your number seven? My number seven. Oh, it's something stupid, I can tell. Uh, my number seven is Transformers The Last oh! Night. <laughs> I'll let you go, because I got things to say. Uh, Michael Bay. <laughs> Why are you so predictable? <laughs> Every year, you gotta make a new, worse Transformers movie. I don't know, this might be, like, the stupidest of the Transformers movies. I'm not sure if it's the worst, to be fair, but I think Revenge of the Fallen might still be the worst, but... This is definitely the stupidest. This is like bordering. That's a tough call, man. I know. I mean, uh, remember Shia LaBeouf's parents? Then that might hammer. I'll give you this. It took me three Revenge days to finish Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, three days. Revenge so of the Fallen is maybe just that. nonsensical ridiculousness, but this is so stupid because it's like let's hammer in King Arthur, Nazis, Anthony Hopkins, um, and Mark Wahlberg, and put them all in a Transformers movie. And uh, hope to God that it all works and fits together. And guess what? It didn't at all. This movie is a nonsensical piece of crap. So let me just, I just want to illustrate a few things that happened in this movie. And that's how I'm going to talk about it. Because I could just talk about this for so long and I don't want to make this long thing. So uh, Anthony Hopkins is Mr. Exposition Man who delivers a lot of exposition <laughs> and then picks up this like alien gun and starts shooting at Transformers. That scene in the movie, I want to say. Yeah, it, it was just because how stupid He's it was. He's going to say Anthony Hopkins. It's the best scene in the movie. It's so stupid. And then he dies instantly, oh which is God, also pretty just... stupid. Okay, um, I found the clip on YouTube. It is singled out. Just look up Anthony Hopkins Transformers 5 death. It's hilarious. I will give that recommendation. It for is hilarious. Movie, at least. And then, okay, so... Hold on, let, let me... Sorry, go ahead. Like my thoughts. Um, it has, like, this... the What is his name? Um, uh, it's like... Oh, uh, the army guy? No, hold on. Um, I always forget. Um, John Turturro. My gosh, I'm sorry. Oh, I keep forgetting John Turturro. So right. isn't this the one with him, like, he doesn't have pants on the whole movie and is yeah. just, like, running around? In a he different, a, he's in Cuba. He's at, he has to stay in Cuba, I guess, and he protects Transformers. Why there. do they put him in this? He movie? has no reason to be in this movie. He does nothing. I think they I just think he makes one phone call to Anthony I, Hopkins, and that's it. I think they just do it because it's John. They Turturro. think it's funny. 
Like, they think this is humor? Like, oh, look, see, we're being funny and, and cute. He got he got the no pants on. It's hilarious. I always laugh when I see someone random without pants on. Yeah, That's my first reaction. That's, that's the funny thing. I don't know. Yeah. All the Transformers are annoying. All of the ones you like are gone, you know, except Bumblebee, I guess. But then Optimus Prime spends 90% of the movie evil. So Or suck. Never mind. I, go ahead. Sorry. Well, he, pres- he spends so- a lot of the movie evil and then instantly turns good again. After hearing Bumblebee's voice. And b- by the way, apparently Bumblebee's voice had worked for a long time and he just decided not to not to use it. I don't know. It's just stupid. To me, it doesn't like bother me because I don't care about these movies. Sure. But I understand. Um, it's just stupid. I just love that Mark Wahlberg's in this. It's just like he's obviously doing it for money. You know, it's so funny. And his character is not... It's not even a character. He's just, it's just Mark Wahlberg in the movie. You know, it's just like, okay... You know, I don't know what else to say. It's just there's the action is sillier and sillier with each one to where this movie has so much going on on the screen in the end. I couldn't even understand like where they were or what they were doing. Right. Because like there's this massive thing that's trying to turn Earth into Cybertron and it's ginormous and there's all this birds and, you know, airplanes and stuff flying around. And then there's all this explosions going on because Michael Bay explosions and just the most visually confusing movie i've seen in a long time it was just i i didn't understand what was going on this movie is just so visual effects overkill that it made me want to barf so that's my review of transformers 5 i'll leave the rest for sean no it's coming don't worry it's coming number seven is unforgettable um we all all made jokes sorry but unforgettable is absolutely terrible i agree with everything you said it's just these characters just it was so dumb and un, they were just unlikable and Catherine heigl is of course this crazy woman and her mother is like just an enabler for her psychosis she like helps hide this like these like um uh, for, not tests um psychiatric like things she had to do and i'm blanking on words right now because i'm so just mad at this movie sorry but this movie, it makes no sense. It's just so generic. Just go watch Basic Instinct. Admittedly, I've never seen it, Go, but I'm sure, based on everything I've heard, go see Fail Attraction. Um, mm-hmm. See those. Stop seeing these terrible... Why are they remaking these? They're 20 years late. Like They're just rip-offs they, that should have come out in the 90s. They try to make like one of these a year, these no, I know, low-rate thrillers. Why, though? What even started Money? this shitty trend? But anyway, crappy trend. I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Whatever. We got Money. one through. Money. It's terrible. Money. It's bland. Everything you said, I agree. I got more to talk about other films, so let's keep moving. All right. So this is what I call the horror movie block of my list. Okay. I have four horror movies in a row. Ooh. Well, you could consider them all as horror movies, I guess. They're all various Shades of terrible. I mean, almost all these are interchangeable, so that's the thing. They're all just terrible, right? So I'll start with Wish Upon. <laughs> I think it's up highest because it's the most original, even though you know you said it's based on like this story that... Monkey's Paw. Yeah. The Monkey's Paw urban legend. I really haven't heard a lot about this story, but it tries to have an original premise. I guess I'll give it that. But other than that, the movie is horrible. It's just unlikable terrible main character who you hate and you hope dies and i hate when they do that when they make like characters that are like really stupid yeah and really like evil she's unlikable from the very beginning yeah they just make her a terrible person and you don't like her and if you don't like your main character how are you supposed to get invested in the movie yeah you know and this movie i don't know like the logic of the movie doesn't make sense to me. Like, a lot of things happen. I'm like, I don't understand. I really don't get it. Can you explain this whole thing to me? This magic... I know it's all magic, and I get it, but I don't really understand why or what the reasons for things happening are. It just kind of, like, defies its own logic at times. And then, of course, they throw in, like, some cliches. You get the creepy boyfriend because she made a wish, but be careful what you wish for. <laughs> of course, he's going to be a creep. She should have... Right. Basically... That what they sh- that this movie advocates is word your wishes like freaking legal statements. Well, I'll talk about a bit more about this too. But Wishmaster is literally a horror series about that, where it's an evil genie like that, and Wishmaster is a better film than this. Yeah, 
I'm sure. I haven't seen it, but yeah. Not that it's an amazing one, but uh, it's <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what else there's to say. It's just like you know, it's just one of those horror movies that you just regret seeing instantly. You know, it just kind of sticks with you in your mind. It's like, geez, I can't believe I sat through that. It was what a terrible film. That's what I got. Okay. My number six is The Circle. Everything you said, man. Um, by God, was this awful. It was so bland. It's like they had this interesting... I mean, okay, not too interesting. It's a premise that's been done before, obviously. Tons of times. It, technology is bad, and here's why. But even saying that, they could have still made me care. They could have still made me a little bit. I was like, okay, what's this stuff with John Boyega? What are we going to learn about the, the three circle? wise men? Yeah, what is so bad about the circle? We never learn what's so bad about the circle. Well, just Tom Hanks and Patton Oswalt are jerks. They're they're effed. That's all we know. Well, no, they just they just jerks for no reason. They're, they're there's no like character development. I guess that's them. it. Uh, no, I want to. The movie ends with Emma Watson revealing to the world on a giant screen all this information we never get to see. But everyone's gasping like, you know, horrible, like right. some god-awful thing happened. They turned to uh, Tom <laughs> Hanks, like you said, turns to Patton Oswalt and cusses and says they're done. And movie's over. That should have maybe happened 30 minutes before the end and then the rest is her trying to escape. That's what I thought this would be like her like on the run or something or trying to escape or like a thriller thing. I no, was they like, never do I that. can go with it. No, it's so boring. They had no ideas. The middle of the movie is literally her having a 24 hour web uh, uh, vlog. That's the other thing. She's really stupid. the most stupid. boring thing ever. You know, she's such a stupid character. She just agrees okay, to whatever I, they I'm going to tell you something I didn't tell you. A uh, little secret. It's streaming on Amazon right now, and I wanted to just watch that scene again because I love the comments that they Yeah, the threw comments in. are so great. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch well, this scene again just to laugh at those comments. We were comments. so bored in the movie. We were just reading the comments like yeah. the surrounding And they're like her. the most obviously internet-y, trolly, absurd comments that were like, this is amazing. Like, pull your shirt up or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, it's stuff like that that would be on the internet. So I'm like, okay. So to be fair, whoever researched the comments actually did a pretty good job making them realistic. Yeah, fair enough. But uh, it's just she's like vlogging herself brushing her teeth. It's like, ooh, that sounds interesting. Um, yeah, who the hell would watch this? And I know people watch real life vlogs, you know, on YouTube. Yeah, I get it. But usually they're edited for a reason. This is literally you see everything. Well, it's like the Truman Show, but and, without the interest. Y yes, exactly. And also Bill Paxson. This is the movie. This is why it's so high. Just because this is what we have for Bill Paxson's legacy, everyone. The guy from Aliens, Terminator. Predator 2 even. All these amazing films. We give him the circle. You literally see him dying on screen and it's the most sad, depressing thing I think I've ever seen. <laughs> it's, it's like Donald Pleasant in Halloween 6. And that's just one of those things that pisses me off in this movie. That yeah, our, this our, is the end of one of my favorite actors, man. conclusion to Bill Paxton oh. is the circle and the terrible training day TV show. God, how depressing is that? By the way, yeah, everybody, speaking of Bill Paxton, and I recommend this to you and everybody, go back and watch Hatfield and McCoys because that just came up in uh, my school today when I was in class. And if you love Bill Paxton, okay. watch that series. It's fantastic. All right. And Kevin nope. Costner. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have to see this then. But yes. Go watch old Bill Paxton movies and never watch this again. And Emma Watson's god freaking awful in this movie. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just remember her for Hermione, I guess, because she just wants to be in crap nowadays, apparently. But Pretty anyway, much. go ahead. You're number All five. Right. We're almost continuing, there. Continuing the horror movie trend, The Bye Bye Man. Bye Bye Man. Hey, let's just talk about this together. Okay. Bye Bye Man is the stupidest named movie ever. I agree. The end. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um... This movie is so, like, misguided because, you know, I, I was watching, like, interviews with the director, Stacey Title, and she's like, oh, yeah, we wanted to create this new, like, Freddy Krueger. She's, like, <laughs> she's thinking, like, she's making this iconic. Oh, and the funny thing about the Bye-Bye Man is there's nothing iconic about him. He is just a hodgepodge of various it's elements of from Freddy better Krueger, movies. Candyman. Yeah. Mixed together in one crappy movie mm -hmm. with terrible terrible acting including the producer's daughter that we always make jokes about because that's how she got the role right because you know, she had to be some sort of producer i daughter. can't believe anything there's no else. way she auditioned for there's that part. nothing else no, no way she auditioned for that part this movie i'll just give my piece real quick this movie is a guilty pleasure for me because i sat there in the theater and i went and saw this after you expecting it to be me just to be pissed off 
I was laughing my ass off the whole time. This movie is hilarious. It's god awful. Don't get me wrong. This is a so bad. It's a good movie. It's like the Wicker Man remake. It's not quite as funny, I'll admit. But no, I I enjoy it as a guilty pleasure. So take that for what it is. I'm, but I agree with you. This movie is horrible. I'm glad you were able to enjoy it. I hated it. I understand that. I hated it. <laughs> it was just a waste of time. It's not. I, scary is not even the right word. It's like it's it's the it's like just it's the most misguided horror movie ever because all of the scares in a, a giant air quotes I'm giving are just either jump like really loud noises, but they don't even qualify as jump scares because they're not scary. They're just jumps, you know. Right. And um, I guess. There's a CGI dog, and I guess that's supposed to be scary. That's right. I forgot about that. The, the CGI dog's supposed to be really scary. Yeah, that's And right. then the Bye Bye Man just kind of stands there. He doesn't do anything, by the way. He's like if some he wants, weird Candyman if you wanted, If you wanted him to be like a Freddy Krueger or a, a, a Michael Myers, he has to do something. Right. He's just this quote-unquote premise. And I'll, I'll give it this. The premise of the movie was slightly interesting. I could see that maybe working in a much better, talented, more talented director's hands. Yeah, the name, of course, being cut out because the name is too silly to take seriously. The name seriously. is so stupid, but the idea of not, like, even thinking about something, that that's hard. Because, like, not saying something, that's easy. You know, that, like, part of the premise, okay, well, don't say it. It's, it's, that's pretty yeah, easy. Yeah, don't think it. It's like, Not oh. thinking, the more you think about it, oh, that's kind of interesting. Could have been reworked and much, made much better, though. And Well, yeah, yeah that's, that's straight from Freddy Krueger, though. You know, don't think about Freddy. Don't spread his word and you'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to bring it up. Anyway. Um, oh, okay. So, Carrie Ann Moss and Faye Dunaway are in this movie. Um, yes, they are. So, first of all, let's lament Carrie Ann Moss. Moss's career because I like her in Trinity, but she's last done literally in the nothing. Yeah, uh, and then Faye Dunaway like decided Trinity, to uh, come back and um, for money. She ran out of <laughs> her retirement fund, ran out basically. So the case for Christ and the Bye Bye Man are helping refund her continued retirement. Um, <laughs> to be fair, she's only in one scene in both of those movies, but yes, it's just depressing to see her there. It maybe. really is. I I, I really like Faye Dunaway. I guess I'm thinking about this because so. I just saw the Insidious movies, but maybe they're thinking maybe we can make her like a Lynn Shay kind of thing. But they didn't kind of because lady. they just made her... Right. No, I agree. Oh! the bi- Remember the opening where they tried to make this like quote-unquote clever, hard, like, you know... Oh! Yes, I remember this. Opening yes. where they do the, like, the one Yes! Where the guy's like walking through down I, the street. I with the usually like oneers. Yeah. This is the most lazy one I've ever seen. It's mm. like it's just following him. It's bland. It's like shot by someone who doesn't really know how to do a oneer. It's not interesting at all. What's going on? No, and it's just the violence is just boring. It's like this is like they. I think the movie's trying to like do an Amityville horror type thing where it's like, look, this this violent crime that's what's going to interest you is the violent crime yeah I think so you know and yeah I could see that I guess I could see this type of thing working in Amityville Horror but the problem is the violence is so removed from the plot it's like it has, it's a flashback to like what 30 years ago 40 years ago something right. like that right it's not like in Amityville Horror where it's the same house that these people move into yeah it's all it's trying to lead into what the Bye Bye Man does but that kind of could, thing could have been done way better than this I, I get they're trying to do like a psychological like the Bye Bye Man makes you kill yourself basically or makes you kill others but well, it, they could have done that so it much it took better. too much time and it just wasn't interesting like even Before I Wake that came out just this year did it a lot better where they you know they do yes. the kind of opening and there's mystery to it you know um I don't know. That's just what I... I... I get you. It's a guilty pleasure, but I completely agree with everything you're saying. Just yeah. My enjoyment level, I guess, was ev- evidently very much higher. But, uh... Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. My next one is Wish Upon, which is... <sighs> Wait, so did you have Bye Bye Man in the same spot? Yeah. Well, then it's my turn again, right? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're number four. My number four is Resident Evil, the final chapter... <laughs> yeah, so this is one I you can construe it as a horror movie or an action film. Take your pick, I guess. <laughs> First of all, I need to talk about the theater going experience because that, as much as that doesn't count towards the my rating, it was hilarious. We walk in the theater, we're sitting up close because a friend of mine and I like sitting close to the theater, and, you know, just to get the big screen experience. We were in the ultra screen too, so we saw this in the ultra screen with one other couple. Oh. It was us and the couple in this wow. massive auditorium. 
Um, and the movie was so loud that my friend with hearing loss was covering his ears. <laughs> we had to move to the very back row of the theater and was still like too loud. So like the sound, mi- by the way, the sound mix, which I'm very well acquainted with because it blared in my ears for the whole movie, is terrible. <laughs> this this is the movie has the worst sound of any movie I've seen, like in the, at least in the last few years. I can't remember a movie that has worse sound. The sound is like, it's all like, you know how movies utilize silence well? This movie doesn't. It doesn't have silence. It's just all loud, bombastic action the whole movie, pounding. The mix is all wrong. Things that should be louder are quiet. Things that should be quiet are loud. It's just, a, it's a mess. And the whole movie tries to parody like Mad Max Fury Road with zombies and that's like the first half really? of the movie. Yeah, they do this like thing where they have this truck and then it's being followed by tons oh, of zombies. God. And they do like this action scene on the truck and all that. So they try and do that. Um, I can see that being a nice setup, but I'm guessing it obviously doesn't pay off. No, no, it's just, it's really stupid. And, and I, I just, I don't even know why this series went on this long. Well, money, besides that. But it's like... They ran out of ideas like after the second movie. They they don't really know yeah. what they're doing anymore. The video it's games been the are same movie better. every you know. Some of the video games are, are better. yeah. I was just saying. Um, some of them. No, but these aren't even like the video games. They're just like stupid, dumb action movies that uh, Paul W. Sanderson just I guess likes the same type of movies. He keeps making it over and over again. And I'll just say all of the acting is terrible. Mila Jovovich she can't act. I'm sorry. No, she can't she act. Can't. Um. This movie has, like, things that make you angry, because I actually kind of enjoy the first Resident Evil on a certain level. Sure. I thought it actually did things I like. You know, I I think it's silly, for sure, at times. It's not a very well-made movie, but it does some things I like. This movie ruins it all, because, first of all, they... So they go back to the, the underground type stuff in the second half of the movie. They, um... They bring back the Red Queen, but instead they cast their daughter, Paul Davis Anderson and Mila Jovovich's daughter. Oh, God. And she's terrible. <laughs> she's such a bad actress. And um, Did she say the line? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh like no. I said, the, we stayed through the credits. Guess what they throw at the end? No! You're, you're all going to die down here. Oh, screw you. Because that's like the best part of the original movie. Yeah? And they say it again. And they do they do it during the movie too. I, uh, I should say. Oh okay. They ruin. Oh that again. okay. They didn't just okay. No, they do both. They throw it at the end of the okay. credits, and that, they. That's a little less stupid, at least. No, it I is. I mean, it's still stupid. stupid, but at least they didn't just do a credit stinger. I'd it's be like, what just. The frick? It's really. St- I knew they were gonna bring it back, and unfortunately, they did because it's just so stupid. So, but this movie tries to tie up all the loose ends of the franchise. It's hilarious how it fails everything because there's the. There's not, way too many loose ends. So that many loose ends. So, because yeah. like they, you know the the what's his name, the guy with the blonde hair, the old guy who's evil. Oh God, I can't know. think of his name. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. No, right? I know what you're talking about though. Um, yeah, he, you know, he's the big main antagonist to this movie, and they try and make him interesting. He's not interesting, and they they okay. So here's I'm just gonna spoil some of the movie to explain why I hate this movie. That's so much. fine. At the end of the movie, so what happens is they're all in this bunker where all the Umbrella Corporation employees are. Okay. They're all being kept in like. Um, like what do they call the the tubes, the sedation tubes? You know, there's a oh, there's a name for it. Uh, sh- I can't remember the name. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, I know like what you're talking about. Where they held a hyper sleep or something? Uh, yeah, they're all in these pods? tubes. Pods? Yeah, all those pods, but there's there's an S word like that's related to it. Anyway, okay. Anyway, not important. Go ahead. Um, so they're all in these these pods in in this uh, hibernation, and their plan is to. This is their plan to defeat Umbrella Corporation is to blow up and kill the last remaining humans because they all worked for a company, I guess. So they're evil. And I'm sure there's like children in this. If you think about it, like they would have brought their families. There's a bunch of kids that they just blow up. And that's the end of the movie, you know? That makes sense. And no it's, it's just the action is so, you know, Paul W. Sanderson action, you know? Right. You know how annoying it is. That's they're throughout the entire over movie. over the top. And... Yeah. Yeah. Shaky cam. The one thing I liked in this movie, and I still remember it because it does stand out, and it's when, and it's just, it's really stupid, but I still enjoyed it because, I don't know, I was I was desperately searching for something to like. There's a moment where, so old, Mila Jovovich rolls up on a wheelchair in old people makeup because she's supposed to be the original Alice. Uh, Alice is a clone, by the way. 
um, oh, of the original. Is that from like five or something? Or is that yeah, they throw movie? in that she's a clone earlier. But, I think I remember that. But now we established that she's the clone of the big um, Umbrella Corporation, Honcho, who was in charge of like the original company before it all went down. Okay. And she's the daughter of like the founder or something. I don't know. It was really convoluted. Uh, but so Wesker's there because, of course, you know, you got to have Wesker just standing around. And they can't kill her because she's a member of the company and the. Like, and no employees of the company can be killed by the Red Queen. But so what happens is she's like, yeah, I can't kill you, but I can f- terminate you. And it's like, Wesker. They rip off Robocop? Yeah, Wesker. I already told you this. You already had that reaction. I uh, forgot about this. And Wesker, you're it. fired. And it is kind of delightful when she says that because then the Red Queen kind of like looks at him like with this evil look and then like blows him up and kills him in the most spectacular way. And it's like, okay. That was a little fun. It's just because I hate Wesker, especially from the video games. I hate Wesker because he's so hard to beat and he's no. dodging all your bullets <laughs> like an idiot, you know. So I guess that was like enjoyable on a in a certain sense. But then they blow up kids, so that's you know the end of the movie. It's just it's everything you imagine this type of movie to be. I'm sorry, I've spent so much time talking about yeah, it. I'll stop. A uh, terrible movie. Okay, number four is Wish Upon. Like I said. Um, Wish Upon is... I agree with everything you said. And my thing is... I was laughing during this movie. Like, bye bye, man. That's true. The thing that holds it back from fully saying the words guilty pleasure... Although it's really close. It's almost like I want to riff it. Because there are hilarious moments in this movie. Is... You're right. Joey Kane's character is horrible. From the very beginning. And... About halfway for the movie, I was like, okay, I think I know what they're trying to do with this. Which they're trying to say this box, it's like a drug, and it makes her really bitchy and horrible. <laughs> the problem is she was a bitch at the beginning of the movie. And they try and like tie it in, like her mother killed herself because of the box, and now it that was so convoluted. It makes them. sense. By the way, apparently her bicycle from when she was a little kid, from the very first scene, she has left in the exact same spot all those years in front of her house. That's right. I will never forget that. That was amazing. And her dad's a dumpster diver. And instead of her being like sympathetic, like, oh, dad, you should get a she's real job. She's embarrassed by him. She's just like, oh, how could you dumpster dive outside my school? And I'm like, I guess she's a teenager. But God, she's, there's a certain level where you got to make her realistic. Not every teenager is that much. I mean, some are. But not every teenager is that much of a bitch. Come on. Um, yeah. Although the ending is hilarious. I will say that's worth a YouTube clip. But uh, this movie is dumb. Everything you said about it, and like I said, it's almost riff tracksable. But that's about it. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah. All right. Just go see Wishmaster. Yeah, my number three. Here we go. His rings. Finishing up the horror block. I understand why you didn't hate this movie as much as I did. If you guys don't know, the the Ring is my favorite horror movie of all time. So this movie holds a particular spot in my. Uh, hard as being you know heartbreaking and and horrible so okay so that they make the ring too right and they answer all the questions we didn't want answered and they do it badly yep i agree so now they're like okay what can we do more how do we answer more questions that people don't care about well <laughs> let's look at her birth mother and like her life in where she lived and all that stuff because apparently we're supposed to care about that right so they try and establish this mystery that we don't care at all about. Because, first of all, who seeing this movie, like, is invested in the ring lore? Like, who who cares? Like, because it's all a bunch of stupid teenagers who haven't even seen the original of the ring. You know, so nobody cares about this. Like, they don't even bring... They, they should have brought Naomi Watts back because it didn't even make sense. Because she was just... The, the main character in this movie was just kind of going further with her research it would have made sense to give her a cameo instead they give a cameo to um her mother yes in like the insane asylum right i Um, remember this yeah barely i'm sorry this movie i saw this in january so this was long this a year ago recently but even i'm forgetting that part yeah yeah. so all that mystery stuff i hated because i don't want to know see that's what that's so great about the original movie you don't want to know anything they don't answer they check the boxes they need to check if you think too hard about the ring it falls apart because the logic of the movie is it's not it doesn't make sense in a pure sense right this is like every horror franchise does this i swear to god they take that iconic thing that was very simple you didn't know a lot about like michael myers or freddy Mm krueger They have to explain it. Oh, there's dream 
demons yeah. that look like sperm flying around. No, okay, that's a sex Freddy oh my movie. God. They look like sperm. Anyway, flying around, and that's what Freddy gets his dream powers. And then Halloween 6, oh, he's cursed in a cult, and that's why he kills people on Halloween. They always try to BS some stupid well, explanation. Okay, no, but here, here's what really annoyed me about Rings. I'm just going to say the thing I hated the okay. most. So first of all, apparently the old tape is stale, so they had to make a much worse new tape that sucks. Okay. It's just... Who like? Did you understand why they did that? Because no, what I thought they should have done, and I thought this would have been funny. Actually, mm-hmm. they have to put it on Blu-ray or something like modernize it. That's what I thought they were going to do. What would have been funny if you wanted to like make this funny? Which I know they're not. Yeah, that's so to, weird. What if Samara's is like, oh shit, the technology has advanced. The test isn't popular anymore. I have to somehow get my tape on Blu-ray, and she has to convince someone or something. But it's like more comical. I guess we're, I'm making her like Freddy now, I suppose. But anything would well, be better no, at I, this point. I wouldn't point. like that. I wouldn't like the movie to be made at all. But what I'm saying is it's so silly that they're using VHS tapes. You know, that's the thing about The yeah. Ring. It came out at the right In time. In 2002. <coughs> and how, the Japanese <coughs> one even better, 1998. Yeah, but I mean, in The Ring, it makes sense. It's timely. This, yeah. Now it doesn't make sense anymore. So either you make a period film or you don't make it at all because it's silly. And... There's just moments in the movie I hate. So, like, yeah, like I said, the new tape, the moment when Samara comes on screen and every single screen in that airplane in the opening. That was so dumb. So stupid. I did chuckle at her coming from the very small TV screen. That I was, was a I funny. wanted, I was like, show me that, show me that, and I will at least give you that. Also, this again. movie Thank decided you. to make Rain, like, evil? Because apparently, yeah, in the original movie, I right. guess they interpreted that it rains a lot, even though. The original movie is in Washington State. That's why it rains a lot. Where it rains all the time. Morons. You don't understand. that. That's just the weather. But apparently the rain is evil now because water was kind of used as like a creepy element. I but, think I get their thought process there. But at least no, the water the was well and stuff. water is used because of the well. But I don't know how rain like has to do with that. Because remember that weird shot of the windows where it's just raining outside and that's kind of oh, and the creepy? water like starts rising yeah, up. Yeah, like it goes up. Why is the water going up? I don't really. I get was that. confused by that too. It, I think they're trying sense. to make it look creepy. Uh, yeah, creepy visuals, and right? I'm like, ooh, rain's going up. Oh no, what is this mean? Um, I don't know or care. Yeah, and everything with Samara is just lame. All the kills are lame. Nothing. Yeah. Because they they the original builds up to that moment when Samara comes there's out. Not, yeah, of the there's television. not a bunch of kills on screen with her coming out of TV. We see some two people die at the beginning, but we don't see the kill itself. We see the aftermath of the kill. And you know what's brilliant about the original movie? There aren't any jump scares. There's also that. Unlike this film, which That's is loaded true. with them. And I hate it. And then, okay, so guess what the, the, God, the maybe climax... Maybe nice to this movie. Guess right? what the it's climax of this movie is. So Vincent D'Onofrio blinded himself, so he never would watch the tape, I guess. No, it's like he watched the tape so that she could never get him, I think was the idea. As long as he can't see... Yeah, that's right. He watched the tape and then he stabbed his eyes out because you, you have to see Samara's face right. to die. So that's the way out, I guess. There's a blot hole. Just make yourself blind. That's what Naomi Watts should have done, idiot. Stab her son's eyes out. Stab her yeah, there you go. eyes out. There you go. No, but um, then it's just a chase movie with a blind guy. It's like, I'll just watch Don't Breathe if I want to watch Don't that. Don't Breathe a hundred times better than that. They ripped up Don't Breathe somehow. <laughs> I... Here's the thing. Well, to when be fair, was, this movie was shot This movie must have been in development this already, so shot, I really doubt was, that. No, it was delayed incessantly. It was shot, like, back in 2015. Oh, so then definitely not. Yeah. yeah it was shot way before okay. Don't Breathe came out, but... Uh, oh, that's right. It was supposed to come out last it's year. It's just much, much worse, though. It's, like, it's so stupid. And, and you know, I what I also hate is the whole idea of this cult. It just didn't make sense to me. I didn't understand the concept, the thrill, I guess. I guess they get a kick out of almost dying? I assumed it, it, the only way I could read it is like a drug thing. Like people who do drugs and it's like But would you kid. ever agree? Or to... like, you know, you remember the fad that was around, fad, I say, around when we were younger? Like teenagers were like playing the choking game and stuff. No. You remember hearing about this? Mm-mm. Kids would like try to choke themselves till they turned blue. Oh, so kids being stupid, I guess. Yes. So it, I took that as just one of those kids But why is this university professor behind it? I don't understand why he's... That I don't get. Like, you're enabling this, like, horrible idea where people are literally dying. Someone mm. dies under his watch. And yep. he's like, oh, oops. Whoops. 
Your person ain't getting And then you they do the stupid enough. car crash cliche. Yeah. I hate the car crash cliche. They need to stop using this Yeah, there's this a car crash. Movies. I'm like, gee, I wonder who's in the car crash. No, oh. they, they always do this to, like, eliminate a character in yeah. a quote-unquote scary way. Mm-hmm. And they just... It needs to stop. It's they so... They did do that in the Bye Bye Man. It, yeah, they did. Yeah. Because the black lady, like, runs up to him in the street and, like, he flips his SUV. That's right. Yep. Anyway. That happened. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'll wrap it up and just say this movie just really pissed me off because The Ring is what is The Ring above all else? It's it's a mystery horror film. It's like a psychological mystery horror movie with yeah. supernatural elements. This movie is like a jump scare filled, boring, bland, typical teen horror movie. You know, without a brain, and it ruins all of the mystery and the, the things you like about the original. It makes everything stupid. It makes when, when a movie, basically, if you think about it, makes the original worse, then it's a special, you know, kind of terrible to me. I understand that. That's fair enough. All right, Sean. What's your number three? Ooh, okay, let's try to get this pretty quick, but my number three is Fifty Shades Darker. All right. By God. Okay. I'll admit, this is one movie I absolutely didn't want to see, but I saw it. Because I was like, you know what? I should at least give it a chance. Maybe it's bad, but maybe it's not as bad as what I've heard. I shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Oh, wait, sometimes it's totally fair to judge a book by its cover. Because this movie was so offensive. Now, the original's worse. That's even more offensive. But just this... I guess I can wrap my thoughts up in the series as a whole. Because the second one still carries over a lot of these problems. This movie is completely promoting abusive relationships. Which I find just disgusting. I know one of the complaints I always hear about, especially in christian circles is about the sex being promoted i'm like you know what that's a lot of movies i'm used to that i whatever you want to think about that why well, but the yeah. way it is promoted that it's if you are dating someone man or woman if you are dating someone and they want you to do something that you don't want to do do it anyways well not it's, because you love them even it's but weird because it. it's not really criticizing or or making a big deal about christian you know changing as a character no they don't he never do it does he doesn't have an all. arc yeah like if he started out as a douche who was like manipulative asshole and then kind okay. of comes into yeah, being then charming I can at least be like okay i get what you're doing no nothing like that he's manipulative in the second one and i won't be surprised although i'm not gonna see it if it, i find out he's manipulative in the third one <laughs> um i refuse this this is like human centipede was for me in the sense in the sense of, I will never see the third one. I will never finish this series. I'm done. I I'm pretending, tried. I'm pretending it won't. It, it doesn't exist anymore. Please never, ever even attempt to watch. The I third will one. never. I it's was still so like scarring me, one. like to this day. Uh, this <laughs> this movie is okay. The one thing I will say that's better it's it's slightly. It feels a little bit better written. It's like the characters are this one a tinge more believable. It's like the acting. Is I, th- a I think it's better just because it's less like offensive. Yes, I think that's also it. That being said, this is still it's still terribly yeah, it's, stupid. It's worse made. It carries and over a plot. It does like those thrillings, the thrill subplots. Oh god, yeah. Right? Because didn't they do that ex girlfriend thing? They did. They did the unforgettable thing. Weird thing is unforgettable. I guess did it better. Which so <laughs> is a weird thing to say. I know, yeah, but I, I guess it, yeah, it did. But, yeah, this movie is offensive, and I would rather eat a bullet than watch the third one. I am so disgusted by the series, and I'm just done. So, yeah. I'd rather watch Twilight. So and I hate I. Twilight. I would actually honestly rather watch I'd Twilight. I'd rather watch yeah. any of them, even New Moon, than this movie. Well, I don't even accept maybe oh. New Moon than this movie. Wait, wait. New Moon's your least favorite? Yeah. I'm basing on what people have said on that one. Admittedly. I haven't you haven't seen, seen Newman? Which ones I, have you seen? I've seen the first and the last one. So you've seen Breaking Down Part 2, but you didn't see Breaking Down Part 1? <laughs> I saw the I saw enough of it online before seeing it. So, Anyway, what I'm saying is I'd rather watch the Twilight movies than the Fifty Shades of Grey movies, and that's saying a lot. <laughs> um, okay. But, yep, that's my thoughts. It sucks. There are two that I hate even more, though, and they're coming up. Yeah, I mean... This was a toss-up. The top I'm, three. I'm de- I had a lot of debate I, going on. Here. I I agree with you. I'm never going to see, um, I'm never going to see um, the third one. Yeah, absolutely. I think we understand what kind of movies these are. Yes. Uh, okay. So, 
My number two. Now, I'm shocked that this isn't my number one. I am honestly shocked that this year I'm curious what managed. It is. Because this movie... I hated this. I, I have an idea what it I is. I hated this movie. And this is not just because it's a sequel to something and it okay. makes it worse. It's not that. This movie is just like a special place in hell for this for me in this movie. Oh. This movie, it is a dog's purpose. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I escaped this movie. I debated it with myself whether I should watch it just for this list, but I escaped uh. So maybe I'm lucky. Talking dog movies, man. They keep haunting me. Why can't I just get away from these movies? Okay, so this movie is about Josh Gad, his dog. And we get to hear his voice throughout the entire movie, and that drives me crazy. I'm sorry, Josh Gad. I just find you annoying a little bit. Josh Gad sucks. I think I'd rather... So, I think this would be high on my list, too. Sounds like gee, it. He just talks like this. Like, oh, oh, I'm a dog. I can't believe it. Oh, my God. You know, so this... I haven't even seen so, the movie, you're already annoying me. Young Dennis Quaid has a dog, and then he's going to get in like this nice fancy college, and then he doesn't, and then the dog dies, and then it gets reincarnated into a new dog, but it's an adult dog, not a, not a baby dog, because that would make sense. So reincarnation <clears throat> happens where it just literally destroys the soul of the old dog, and then, you know... What the hell? Well, due That's to so plot, twisted. You know, you can't... You know, they don't want to waste time, you know, establishing oh, sure. that the dog actually grows up. So they basically have this Josh Gad jumping around into different dogs and then telling, like, heartwarming this sounds more dog like, stories. You know what this sounds like? What? I know you haven't seen it, but this sounds like the plot of Jason Goes to Hell where Jason keeps jumping bodies. <laughs> Fair enough. Sounds like yeah. a horror movie with a demon. <laughs> well, it's basically like, it's almost like an anthology dog movie, you know, just with this central Josh Gad character. And basically, like, what it does is, like, oh, look. Look how great dogs are. Look how they help people. <laughs> look how gr- great they are. And it's like, oh, my God. This is the worst way to tell this. It's like we don't get a sta- we don't atta- get attached to any of the characters because they jump out of the story way too fast. You know, if they just made this movie about Dennis Quaid and his dog, I could get, maybe get behind that, right? You can understand they could maybe make an interesting movie out of that. But because you jump around all the time, and apparently this Josh Gad dog soul is like the greatest dog soul ever. He <laughs> saves all these people's lives and he like rescues a child from the river, you know, okay. and like, you know, does all this heroic thing. I know, that was like a controversial scene. That's all I know about this. Yeah, be- oh river, yeah, that's funny because the, 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 the production all like tortured animals by like letting them go underwater too long and almost drowning them and so got, this is like milo and otis in a time when it's not a good idea to be milo and otis essentially they, they got in really big trouble actually over it yeah and i understand so not only in this movie not only did the production of this movie not treat dogs well you know the movie is just trying that lowest common denominator lifetime movie level heartwarming crap that i'm so sick of but the fact that this movie does it over and over and over and over again with different cliches different plot lines it drived it drove me crazy you know, this movie literally drove me crazy. I was, Brandon was next to me. I was like ranting to him. Like, ah, oh, I can't, this movie is so bad. And I was like, I was like fuming in the theater even about how angry the movie was making me. And it's just a nonsensical piece of crap. It's just like one of those movies that you're like, how did this exist? How does this come to be? Who thought this was a good idea? You know, I don't even know if the movie made money. I kind of hope it didn't. But, um... Yeah, and by the way, the ending, I'm spoiling this movie because don't see this movie. Um, the ending, Josh Gad's dog character comes back in a different dog body and tries to convince Dennis Quaid that it's really his soul. And eventually, Dennis Quaid is convinced that it's his old dog. So they have this big reunion. Uh, whoa, whoa. And then, get this, what? the dog gets somehow gets his old girlfriend from way back when to come to his house and they have a reunion scene and it's kind of implied that they get together in the end because they were originally going to get together but then life drove them apart but then these like 60 year olds have a little you know romantic reunion what? because of the dog and that's the end of the movie oh my god this is the worst thing i've ever heard of mm-hmm. this is awful Yep. I kind of want to see how bad it is. No, you but... don't. No, you don't. You don't want to go anywhere near this movie. I'm not even kidding. Like, this movie, like, was depressing. Like, and how horrible it was. Like, 
it's so exploitative, you know, it's like, it's trying to exploit people and their love of dogs yeah. and just trying to hammer in as many of those cliches as they can. You know, this is from Lassie Hellstrom, who directed Hachi, A Dog's Tale, which is another one of those movies that annoys me because of how it's cloying sure. sentimentality. It's like, just see one of the Benji movies or see Homeward Bound. I loved Homeward Bound when I was a kid. See Marley and Me. Freaking watch Marley and Me, yeah. Watch uh, Old Yeller. Watch Air Bud over this from what it sounds like. Damn. Lassie. Yeah, there's a lot of better things. Would you rather watch Beethoven than this? No. Okay, Beethoven's I'd, worse. No, I'd rather watch neither. Okay. I won't. I no, no, no. I'm, to I'm make... saying, yeah, no, it's gone to your neither. head. Yeah, okay. I take the All bullet. Right, fine. I would okay. take the bullet over that. All right. No. Fair enough. Beethoven. Jeez. <laughs> okay, yeah. Anyway, Dog's Purpose, horrible. Go ahead, Sean. What's your number two? <laughs> My number two. Uh, well, you might want to join me. I don't know, but it's Book of Henry. Oh. Well, you, you want to wait? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Okay. Because I know you saw it too. Book of Henry is awful. By God, this movie is schizophrenia of the movie. Uh, it starts off like, okay, a nice little family film, I'm sure. You know, it seems generic, but it doesn't seem harmful or anything. And then it takes a very dark turn when the eldest kid, played by Jaden Lieberher, finds out that his neighbor, uh, a girl, may be being abused and possibly raped by her police father. That takes, and then it takes an even darker turn when spontaneously out of nowhere, the kid dies in the middle of the movie. Just, you know, gets sick, ends up in the hospital, and dies. And so now it's Jacob Tremblay and Naomi Watts who got to live together without their perfect little angel. And Naomi Watts, this character, is this mother who is the most useless human being just on the planet, ever. In real life or in movies I've ever seen. <laughs> Because she, I don't understand. If you, the idea is this kid is so smart. He's like Jesus, the Jesus Christ. He's like the reincarnation Albert of Einstein. Jesus Christ. He's Albert Einstein. Uh, but I, you're right. He because is. to be fair, he doesn't come back from the dead. I was expecting it. I was honestly well, waiting for try. him to rise after three days. That's how much he's like Jesus freaking Christ. But anyway, he's Albert Einstein. And I don't understand. Okay, having the kid help more around the house with more adult things. She literally does nothing. She sits there and plays video games like a little kid while the kid, while Jaden Lieberher does her taxes, does her mortgage, and does all the work. He cooks. She doesn't know how to cook. She can't cook. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding? What adult can't cook a freaking pizza? What the hell is this? You can't put a TV dinner in an oven? Come on, lady. God! She somehow has a job. That shocked me. I was supposed to hold down a job. <laughs> Isn't she a waitress with She's Sarah She's a waitress. Silverman? Yeah. Yeah, she is. And they're best friends and they like gossip with yep. each other. Yep. Um, and they act like 20-year-olds. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Exactly right. And then, of course, it turns out Jaden Lee or her has left a diary in which he has given... Very, very, very explicit and specific instructions about how to kill this police commissioner who is abusing his neighbor friend, who is a girl. And I don't want to take it all up because I know you saw this too and you haven't mentioned it yet. But this movie, it's a heinous turkey of a movie. It is a dumpster fire. It sucks, but there's one that pissed me off a little bit more and this was honestly a toss-up. I had a lot of debate, a lot of self-inside realization you know, meditation, but there's one I hate a little bit more, but this movie is pitiful. Go ahead. Okay. Well, my, my number one, <laughs> you might've guessed it. Um, it is three billboards inside of Missouri. I, I wow. really, really hated this movie. And I understand. Okay. Um, I'm not going to drag that out too much. The book of Henry. <laughs> yeah. As I have stated numerous times the last six months, what were you thinking, Colin? <laughs> well, I wanted to do something, you know, original. You know, I wanted to make an original film, and this movie's really original. Yeah, I'll give you that, Colin. It's original. Oh, yeah, it is. It's one of the most original movies of the year, and the fact that it's so outstandingly terrible that it actually blows my mind how you were able to make something this nonsensically stupid. Okay, so yes, you mentioned a lot of very good points. I'm going to mention some more. First of all... There is a scene, and 
I need to talk about this. I've been talking about it for six months. Finally, get to talk about it in this video, where Naomi Watts is talking to Jacob Tremblay in in their kitchen, and J- I know what you're gonna say. And, J- and, J- and Jacob's like, uh, we got. Mom, you gotta listen to Henry. And then she turns to this little ten-year-old boy and says, "We are not killing the police commissioner." <laughs> to Jacob Tremblay. Jacob. And Tremblay. then he's like, "It's what Henry would have wanted. He would have to do it. It's what Henry would have wanted." And it's like, what is this movie? It's like unbelievably stupid. What? So okay, no one acts like this. No, this is the, the silliest movie ever. So first of all, the first half of this movie is trying to be like this really like. Like, uh, oh, it's kind of whimsical, you know, a little bit. But then it also has, like, this dark element of this abuse happening that we never really see or understand. But it's implied, heavily implied. And I never really understood all of, like, the the elements. Like, the, the, the pilot hat and all of that other crap. And the contraptions that Henry builds. I don't know. He's just a genius. So, more more evidence he's that he's a genius. Yeah, he's perfect. He's a, he's a Gary Stu. I'm yeah. going to use that yes. term. And and what happens is so he he comes up with these elaborate instructions to his mother and it's the most ridiculous thing. Yes, thank Naomi you. Naomi Watts puts in these earbuds and is listening to Henry and Henry is literally like talking to her from the dead. She's like, so he's like <laughs> she amazing. she makes a comment and he'll instantly respond as if he heard her. I guess he knows his mother yeah, so well. They have it they have him I guess mess up quote unquote once. There's like one thing. No, I'll he get says. to that because because yeah. what they do is she buys a sniper rifle, according to the, Henry's instructions, and then she goes out in the woods and practices shooting, and like he's making comments on her shooting, like "nice grouping on those shots, mom," and it's like, what? Yeah. What? Like it's like, you know, and it, he, she's like supposed to listen to these instructions, and then he comes up with this elaborate idea where uh, Dean Norris, who plays the evil, you know, cop. The- Police, police commission. Anti Hank, I'm gonna call him. Um, All right. Evil Hank uh, <laughs> comes out and well, Dean Norris is in some stinkers because he was also in a, a fist fight this year. He's got to work <laughs> on that. Um, yeah, he uh, he walks out and then Naomi Watts has a sniper rifle in this gazebo treehouse thing that Henry had, and like he's like, shoot him, mom, shoot him, like over these stupid headphones and. Naomi Watts accidentally backs into this thing that triggers this Rube Goldberg contraption that springs out a bunch of photographs of freaking crap. Why is why is and that make this? you know makes him her realize that what she's doing is wrong and she doesn't listen to Henry and find some other convoluted way to turn him in. And you know that's the movie. You know, isn't that amazing? Aren't you really invested by that plot? Doesn't that sound so incredible? Oh, what what God, pisses me off so much about this movie is that how much of a waste it was, you know. Because yeah. first of all, really talented people in this movie. Naomi Watts, she's incredible. Yeah. She needs to pick better projects, though. I don't know what's going on with her agent, man. Fire your agent, Naomi Watts. Let me just say yeah, that. you were shut in last year, which I didn't see, but everyone yeah, told her me it second was awful. J- Jacob Tremblay Naomi yeah. Watts movie. This one, Jacob Tremblay does talk, so it does have that. <laughs> At least he was in Wonder this year, so he's redeemed this year already. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I don't have a problem with him in the movie. It's just, it's a terrible movie around yeah. him. You know, it's like, uh And Jane Lieberher, who also has a good movie this year. And it. Um, yeah, he he's also wasted just as this ludicrously unrealistic child. Like, mm-hmm. he's written as an adult. Like, yeah. you don't get the sadness that he dies because it doesn't act, feel like a real person. I don't know if you ever saw this. You maybe did. Do you remember Richie Rich? It kind of reminded me of those movies. The Macaulay Culkin, like, I'm too smarter than... I'm so smart than every adult. Yeah. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of that. And yeah. that annoyed me back then. That's too. a bad thing, too. Yeah, it's... I did not like Richie Rich. Um, and I really don't like this. Yeah, and just this whole movie was just, like, a bafflingly stupid. Like, I couldn't imagine or believe that this movie was that bad. We thought it was just going to be all right. You know, even after hearing the reviews, we're like, yeah, it'll be okay. Right. You know, how bad can it be? You know? Oh, boy, was I wrong. This movie was horrible. Oh, God. Like, okay, this just proves to you that original doesn't mean better. Or it doesn't mean great. Because, yeah, yeah Colin, the movie's original that doesn't make it any yes. better than it is. I love original ideas, but you need to have a good original idea. 
Yeah, it's like just because a movie is different doesn't make it better. Sometimes different is bad. Like this movie is so weird that it just becomes like this this anomaly. Like you don't like yeah, a movie I'll, from a different dimension. Honestly, part of the reason you know you were talking about it a lot. I watched this much more recently because of everything I heard. It was a morbid curiosity. I Sorry. Had to rent it on Amazon. Why'd you do that? Uh, part of the reason also was he was fired from Star Wars Episode Nine because of creative differences, but also because of this movie and how bad it got reviewed and bombed. So I wanted to see well, he, how they, bad they was it. They kind of made him that he was kind of a jerk. That they, they Sure. Kind of, no, I, I'm not going to say it was just that. They've said that. No, I think that's part of it. I think the guy is just kind of a misguided idiot who... who yeah. You know, Jurassic World was a, was, a, was a fluke. You know, I haven't seen Safety Not Guaranteed. So to be fair, I still am going to watch that. But... When it comes to Jurassic World, it's not like a, a director's movie. It's very That's just him true. on autopilot. I don't think that he had I, much to do with probably that. Probably Spielberg and the writers there, they're much involved in that movie. But what I was going to say is I wanted to know how bad this one was. And God, am I happy he was fired from episode nine. Whatever I think of J.J. coming back... He, at least he can film a movie. Yeah, that's the instantly thing. When I was walking into the book, I was like, oh my God, I, please tell me this guy isn't actually going to do Star Wars. At the yeah. time, he was. Still. Right, he still was. And I was terrified after that. I went, oh no. He's, he's going to ruin it. Thank God they fired him. I'm sorry, Colin. I have no respect for you anymore. I'm sorry. Right. There are certain times where a director makes a movie so bad that it takes three good movies to redeem. You know? And that's what this is. I yeah. don't... I just cannot believe how bad this movie was. It made me angry. It made me sad that this movie was made. It, like like sad that this talent was wasted and this mm-hmm. the money was wasted on this terrible movie. It made me sad that people saw this movie. It made me sad that paper was wasted for this script. I know, but people <laughs> saw this movie. To be fair, it kind of flopped, thank God. But people saw this. And it's like it, how disrespectful this movie is to people's time people's investment with its attempts it's 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 evil attempts to elicit yeah sympathy it feels like manipulation. by killing off a child mm-hmm. I, okay i need to make this random i'm over when you kill a child in a movie it is probably the worst thing that you can do right it is one of the most egregious things that can happen in life right it's one of the most tragic and horrible things right. so as a writer you need to have respect for that right like when a child dies in a movie, it's a big deal. You know, like, if it's, especially if it's a main character, mm-hmm. you know. And this movie has absolutely no respect for its viewer. It is using that death as a tool to manipulate the audience to care about a character that is so unrealistic and not very likable either. He's kind of a jerk. Yes. Inclu- including during the t- tape stuff. What he requires his mother to do, it's evil. You know, he kind of so- comes off as manipulative and horrible. Yeah. His solution is to kill him. I mean, there's no... He doesn't struggle over that decision. It's not like a moral ambiguity. Sure, the movie tries to point out that, oh, look, there's nothing they could do. And it's like, yeah, I don't really believe that. But <laughs> anyway, I could keep going on and on. I'm just going to pass it off to you and say I hated this movie. Yeah, I hate this one too. Uh, I know what your worst is. Obviously, so. at this point, because I haven't mentioned it. Um, my number one is one I struggled with because I didn't know if Book of Henry was worse. And I think technically it was worse, but I think this film just baffled me more, and that is Transformers The Last Night. This movie is incomprehensible. Now, you missed this in theaters too, right? I did. So, I didn't even have like... Because they're big screen kind of movies, yeah. even though they're bad. So I didn't even have that. I rented it on Amazon. And I still felt like Michael Bay robbed me. Like, took a gun to my head and robbed me. Mm. <laughs> of, like, four or five bucks, whatever yeah. it was. This movie's incomprehensible. 40 minutes in, I was looking up the Wikipedia plot summary just so I could figure out what the frick was happening in this movie. I had the same experience, yeah. Except for you were in the fear at the very least. I could I, I could pause up. the movie. Yeah. So I guess I have that over you. Thank God, yeah. But... This movie, it's just everything wrong to Hollywood. It just screamed to me, this is what is wrong with Hollywood. This is what is wrong with movies. Mm-hmm. And I love film. And that's why it pissed me off. This is not art. This is him pissing all over art. And I don't want to sound like a Michael Bay hater. I will say this. I give him The Rock. I give him Bad Boys. The first one. I haven't seen the second one. I haven't seen Pain and Gain. I know some people like that. And I will even give him the first Transformers as a guilty pleasure. It is perfectly fine. It feels like a movie at least. Um, this one does not feel like a movie. This feels like a cash grab for everyone. Mark Wahlberg is phoning it in. Anthony Hopkins. 
I, I laugh at movie. his death scene because it's funny, but that is the most depressing thing. I just, I want him in something good soon, just so, like, he can be good again, you know? Because he is old, and that's scary when he's in a movie this bad, Thor and you're Ragnarok, at that yes. age. You're kind of like, okay, be in something good. Play- well, Thor Ragnarok, yeah, but he's barely in it. Um... This movie is just a complete waste of cellular... Well, I guess not celluloid, but a complete waste of... Digital information. Digital information. <laughs> File size. <laughs> File size, yes. Um, computer space. Yeah. It is incomprehensible. Nothing about this is good. It, is a, it feels like a sledgehammer to the fa- face of Michael Bay swinging a sledgehammer at me and saying, Don't think, don't think, don't think, don't think. Nothing makes sense. From the very beginning, why... Uh, how does Merlin know what a spaceship is? I know this is a nitpick, but this bothered me. He goes, he has an, a voiceover saying, I had to go to this spaceship, the alien spaceship that had landed. And I'm like, this is 410. You don't know what those words are. <laughs> what the frick is this well, movie? Well, he's speaking like modern English, which is already just stupid. You know? that, I, that I give it because I know they're modernizing it for modern dumb audiences. So I'm like, all right, fine. I understand that. But then when you're saying terms like space of an alien, then I'm like, okay, what the hell is that? And it just goes downhill from there. Optimus Prime, his turn to evil is just as abrupt. I mean, it's stupid and forced. And it's not as well abrupt done. as him turning back to good. Yes. And here's the thing. Vin Diesel, they did the same thing with his character, Dominic Toretto, with Fate what? of the Furious, but at least they gave him a reason. Well, no, you know what's so lazy about this one, though? Is they make him mind-controlled. It's yes. not him making a decision, which would have been interesting. Yeah, Dominic Toretto was like, I have to decide between my family and saving No, but I child. also disagree with that. Because, okay, here, well, yeah. here's what they should have done to make it interesting. Okay. They should have made him decide... That he was wrong at the expense of his friends. Like, actual do a betrayal. Because that would have been a more ca- interesting character decision, yeah. right? That sure. would have made it... Sure, it would have reflected poorly on him. But he could have had that moment where he's like, what have I done moment? You know, the bridge on the river quiet moment. That's a great type of thing. And that's why it's been yeah. used in film. Because it's powerful, right? What is powerful about him turning back to good in this movie? Bumblebee talks. Oh, my God. That was so stupid. There's this whole plot thing that... I, I guess Which, it was in the other films. By the way, it does annoy me that it took them this long to make him talk because I found the gimmick really annoying that he couldn't talk. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, he can't talk. He finally talks in his real voice. Comes out of nowhere. It's like, he, he and that's the th- and the thing is, that's what turns him to good. Hearing Bumblebee's original voice. He could have, Bumblebee could have literally said the sentence, I just pooped myself. And Optimus Prime would have gone like, I'm good again. Thank you, Bumblebee, for saying I'm you good pooped again. yourself. <laughs> because that's the level of stupid this is. Also, Michael Bay doesn't care about the cartoons. And I'm not a fan of the Transformers anime or anything. But I at least, I've seen the anime movie. I know enough about it to even call bull crap on him. Why haven't they done that, the death of Optimus yet? Because, I mean, if they wanted to do something I don't know. interesting... <laughs> That would have been great for this one. I mean, not that this one, it would have saved it, but at least it would have had something. Yeah. Um, it's just all the characters are wasted. Everything about this is wasted. It's just everything wrong with Hollywood. People saw this movie. Thank God it, it's less. It got less in the box office than other Transformers movies. I also love that every single movie has Megatron in it and like this reduced capacity role. Like, yeah, Megatron's still here doing something. Oh yeah, and but then, he's not the big main. And then villain. the army gets. Thank you for bringing up Megatron. The army brings Megatron and the Decepticons to be in basically Suicide Squad is what they rip yep. off, and to fight for them to fight or find some Cybertron lady. Yeah, fight the Cybertron lady. I don't know her what name. What the hell is this? Evil oh, also Galgatron lady. is apparently Earth. That is not true. That's what I was getting at. Galgatron is a planet eater. In yeah, Transformers. they screw that up. How the hell do you see? It? You know, I know. Michael Bay doesn't care. Michael Bay just wants your money. And it's so obvious. Well, these movies have like 10 writers. That's probably the problem. Yeah, that's the other problem. And the the fact that Steven Spielberg's name is attached to this, I'm losing my respect for my favorite director because of these damn movies. Spielberg handpicked Michael Bay for the Transformers movie. I... The post makes me not want to say this, and I'm still excited for Ready Player One, but I've lost respect for Spielberg. I used to like Spielberg. He was my favorite director. But this movie just pisses me off so much that it's like, it's a lot of it's being taken away. You know, it's like, it's it's hinging on by like a little fun, like a little finger that looks a lot like E.T.'s finger hanging on to a ledge. Because, by God, Spielberg, what the hell were you thinking? 
I'm sorry for being so loud and angry, but I got this movie just pisses no, me I off. I understand. <sighs> End of my rant. This All movie's right. trash. Thank God we're, it's over. Okay. Yeah, that was a little longer than we thought, but I guess that happens with these type of videos. We yes, it does. We get angry, but mm-hmm. it's cathartic. You know, it's really cathartic to be able to rant about our our our, our misfortunes of the year, <laughs> to share our pain, and now. We can rest. Let this these movies rest. Yes. Forget about them, or attempt to bury them in yes. our heads, and move on to 2018, where we hope a fresh start. Hope to God that maybe it won't be as bad. Um, I would love to not see anything as bad as Book of Henry or Transformers. Yeah, that'd be great. Any final thoughts, Sean? These movies are awful. Um, there are some films I'm happy I missed, like A Dog's Purpose, I guess. Um, you are so lucky. <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm happy to talk about film even in the worst uh, because at least then that means I can appreciate the great movies. That's the one thing I can say about bad movies, and that why I'm happy they. Exist. It makes you appreciate the because good movies because when they're done well, more. it makes me just want to like hug them, like just feel like yes, thank you for not sucking and wasting my time. Oh yeah, th- these are terrible. But yes, 2018, I'm excited. Start a new list. Start a new year of film. And hopefully it'll be better than at least those bad movies. 2017 overall, what do you think of the year? I guess we haven't talked about it. Yeah, I guess we can sum it up here. Um, it was fine. You know, it's 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 a solid year. It had some really good stuff, some really bad stuff. I mean, it kind of seems to me kind of like a typical year. It wasn't, like, incredible, and it also yeah. wasn't terrible. Um, it just kind of was in the middle for me. Um, there were some surprises. There were some things that I didn't expect. Um, some movies I liked more than I thought I was going to. Some movies I didn't like as much as I thought I was going to. Uh, so it's always interesting to see which ones those are. It's actually a lot of fun to go back, compare to your anticipated list, and see how you did, you know, in your anticipation. But the interesting thing about movies is they always come out of... The, the thing I love about film is the, the really good ones almost always come out of the blue. You know, they come out of left field. There's always those you know, movies that come out and you just had no idea they exist... And some of them can be really great. Mm-hmm. And I love when that happens. It's so yeah. nice to see a movie you weren't expecting. I love expecting. seeing like, this great independent movie or a small movie or just a drama. Or even a movie that maybe is something I would think, oh, I might not like this, judging by the trailers or something. But then go away going, wow, that, that was, great. was yeah. fun. Or that was good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so the year wasn't like particularly bad. I mean, The Book of Henry is terrible. It's still not like the no, worst movie I've ever a, seen. No, there are garbage year. This is... There are garbage movies in this year. Sorry, but there have been worse years. There have been worse yeah. years in recent years. I mean, there yeah. are some great movies this year, too. Watch our best or listen to our best of list video. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much, guys, for listening. I understand this long video, and I know it wasn't as polished as the, the best of video because, honestly, why would I want to polish a worst list? You want to um, polish a turd? I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, but hopefully, it was enjoyable to listen to our pain. Thanks, guys, so much. Again, <laughs> as always, like, comment, subscribe. Um, also, i do not not sh- entirely sure I'm going to get this up, but I'm hoping to get it up before the Oscars so I can get our... We are going to do our personal Oscar list. Okay. Um, so that'll come up right around the time for the Oscars. It'll be right around that same time. Um, and also expect uh, a couple shorter podcasts, hopefully soon, covering some of the movies coming out in the recent... In the meantime, so yeah. it's gonna be a weird release schedule because these podcasts are so long; they're a little bit harder to to edit, especially the best. That I'm still in the midst of that; it's gonna take me a while, and then I'm obviously gonna get this up after that. So, but thank you guys for being patient. Uh, We're under- gonna try to at least get them up before the Oscars. I- oh yeah, because I want the Oscar one done, which yeah. is the one that's gonna for come sure. last, of course, by Oscar Day. Yeah, that's my goal. So I have like a month. So. I'm going to keep working at it. But thank you guys for listening so much. um, And we'll catch you next time. All right. Bye. Yet another year. Yeah. Here's to 2018. Yeah, here we go again.